Welcome. Welcome. Is this on? Okay. Yep. Welcome to the February 21st, 2024 Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting today at 532. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance is for being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast. Members of the public with particular interest in any I specific item on the agenda should make plans to be here in person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held here in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone in, intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. Um, so I'm calling this meeting to order. And the first um, thing that we're going to talk about tonight is our road repair updates with Kevin Scarborough, our DPW superintendent, and John Pachort, who is our EMD. Hi, good evening. Thanks for the invitation. So we originally were back with the board in late January, early February, gave you an update at that point in which you authorized a few roads to be repaired. An update for the general public, Broughton's Pond Road has been completed, Child's Cross Road, Waitley Road, and Matthews Road. Tomorrow up on the uh, the operations list is Mill Village. We're going to saw cut in the area of Boynton Road. And Friday, we're actually going to open up that culvert and replace that um, deteriorated 12-inch pipe with a 24-inch uh, a new pipe. You'll notice that some preliminary maintenance work has been done in the last day or two just to take down the water level in that area allowing us to work. So I gave the board two different reports. They're labeled storm damage update. One on top says 124. The mm -hmm. second one says 221. 124 has some estimates in the green. 221 has the green listed as done. So the pending repairs back in January 24th was 230,000. The pending repairs on 221 being today is down to 145,000. You'll notice that the total, if you compare them side by side, that's why I gave you a clip, the total has varied by about $30. We were at 2.36 before, we're at 2.36 now. I think there was about a $30 variable in the last three weeks since we, uh, we've we spent time with you guys. The roads uh, after Mill Village in Boynton is done, we're waiting for council to approve Steam Mill Road where we have a failing culvert up there. We are worried about emergency vehicle access. However, there is a uh, pending litigation there and I don't wanna make sure we don't compromise anything with respect to the town's position. Next up on the agenda would be Hawks Road, McClellan Farm Road and Depot Road. Uh, I've spoken to one or two of the board members on the side. The material that we pulled out of a couple different uh, damage locations and replaced it with rock stabilizing banks, we actually used that material to backfill some of the deep ruts on McClellan Farm Road already. So McClellan Farm Road already got some backfill done for just the trucking costs, which we needed to do no matter what. It was just a good cost-effective money, cost-effective uh I guess, approach to that area that Kevin kind of came up with. So that was good. I, we were able to reduce McClellan Farm Road down from the uh, the 24th in January to February from 30,000 down to 20,000. And I think we're still going to escape that for well, well under that amount. So pending repairs, about 145,000. Next up, when we cycle off of Boynton, would be to go up on Hawks Road and split our time, depending on how much rain we get next week, between Hawks Road and Depot Road. Depot Road is paved, so the excavator can work up there. They're not working in mud. Uh, they're in an elevated position, and they can work in a much safer environment, where if you're taking on any decent amount of rain, Hawks Road, you're just going to create a mess mm -hmm. to try and fix a mess. So we'd like to really divide our attention next week between Hawks and Boynton, depending on how much uh, Mother Weather uh, cooperates with us. You mean Depot? I'm sorry, Depot and Hawks, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to be clear that what you're doing on McClellan Farm Road and 
and deep erode is just stabilization. It is not repair. Yep. So both uh, McClellan Farm is stabilization at this point. We uh, pending after the current material stabilizes in there, we're going to bring in a few truck loads of rock and stabilize that bank. Depot Road, the goal is to put, uh, there's a failing 12 inch culvert that crosses under the road. We're going to replace that, hopefully upsize that, and then put a secondary one halfway down, stabilize the bank. And then Kevin, whatever he does with that after, whether he he puts a skim coat of pavement on that, that would be more chapter 90 money at that point. But right now it's stabilization. As we know, there's a water main that runs down there, but it is also a secondary egress. Heaven forbid we have uh, something transpire out on five and 10. It's a back way to get people out of Eagle Brook as well. Yeah. Yep. So Depot, McClellan Farm and Hawks, Hawks Road, just a preliminary estimate from Kevin, myself, and uh, Mike Morosky, who's been utterly amazing to the town of Deerfield. Hawks is looking at roughly 60,000. McClellan Farm, we reduced from 30 to 20. And Depot is just roughly 30. However, I think we're going to be well below there as well. So those are the three ones that are really pending the select board approval. Kevin and I were just wondering what questions that you guys had, or are you comfortable with the uh, the work that we've described? I'm good. Um, I, 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 I don't know if you all have anything to say, but I just want to say that um, Hawks Road is a mess. And um, I feel pretty comfortable we could do a DER, which is Division of Ecological Restoration Grant, but there is a match requirement for that. And um, unfortunately, even going out to bid, and then we wouldn't probably see construction until next fall. Listen, and and Hawks Road is not going to last till next fall. So I, I highly I, doubt that that we're going to get that DER. I've been working listen. with with Chris on the planner. We've been going back and forth. I one of the one of the problems that DER had was they want to know what the condition of the culvert was for the for the railroad. Mm -hmm. So I went and met with the railroad and went down there and took a bunch of pictures, folding yards. I mean, we don't fall within the criteria of what they're looking for. Well, um, I, that's what I was going to say. Even you know, though Carrie Banks has them. been working with us since Irene, right. and I think we have a good story. Um, I don't know how competitive we are going to be because the towns right. like Levert have um, several locations mm -hmm. that are more competitive than us. So I'm I'm think that this is fairly well. My real. thoughts are by the time you spend all the staff time and everything to go chase a grant, and we have a cash match anyways. We'll just get it done. I mean, well, this is I'm, I think you're talking will, beyond right. I'm yeah. I'm I'm I think this will be enough to stabilize to stabilize it, and we'd have to put this in between now and next fall. I think if we have huge rainfall mm -hmm. events like we will reassess. Had, had yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell based on this winter, but you know we're going to get more rain, and and it, it's it, you have to be able to get emergency vehicles up there. That's my problem. I it's such a wreck that you I just can't see our ambulance making it up there. So whatever we can do to keep these numbers lower. Mm -hmm. I know you've got you got to guess at the moment until you get mm -hmm. in there with the trucks and the and the stuff. So yeah, I'd, I'd be grateful to any savings you find in yeah. the next few weeks as you tackle this. But I'm I'm good to go. You guys okay. have done great work putting this together. So thank you. Yeah, there's always the side variables. Like yeah. when we do the work on Hawks, and, and Kevin mentioned this today, it's such a narrow one lane road that we have to shore up Foxtown Road mm -hmm. as an emergency egress for the residents and emergency vehicles sure. so they can get through why we even do the work on the front side hill. Right. And, the, you know, that's going to take a few thousand dollars. It's just right. it, so these yeah. are just estimates. Yep. My, Kevin, yeah. and my hope is always that we come in well below. Yeah, and every single time we have so far, and right. hopefully we continue. Right. Yeah. Sounds well, good. I would make a motion to authorize you to move forward on Hawks Road, McCollin Farm Road, and Depot Road. I'll second that motion. Is there any more discussion? Um, I was out watching Mr. Moroski uh, do his magic on Mill Village Road, and uh, it's clear that we will get out of there below what you're estimating. So that's good. And other than that. Um, Tim Hilchey, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you, thank guys. You. Really appreciate the work. Thank you. Take care. Just thank a real you. quick one, just so, mm -hmm. just so everybody's fully well aware. 
Um, as far as my chapter 90 money is concerned, you know, I've already got the money captured for Eastern Grays and Cross because that has to happen this year. Yeah. Right now, I'll take that out. I've got $1.4 million worth of paving. It really should be done this year. And I've mm -hmm. got 650000 Right. Yeah, we're going to. So have to with that it. being said, so every time I utilize my Chapter 90 money outside of our Less standard, what needs to be done for emergency work, repairs, whatever. Right. That's just one more section of road. Section of road that's not being taken care of, which is stuff that people travel on. And again, day. just to make it clear, like we never have borrowed or done anything other than Chapter 90 since I've been here, probably mm -hmm. a lot of time before yeah. that. We that's the only thing we do for paving roads. And, you know, I think at some point we're going to run into the fact that we need to actually yeah. pony up some money and do it on our own as well or match with it or some, somehow tackle some more because it, we just keep falling behind and behind. And as Carolyn says all the time, that asphalt doesn't last as long as, yeah. it, as it did because mm -hmm. you get that. We haven't really had a deep freeze this year, but we've yeah. had a lot of mud, yeah, and that it's, doesn't it's, do great for the for the base. Definitely. Yeah, but what happens is it's <laughs> that we get the really bad cold, um, you know, the like in the teens. Yeah, and then big. and then you get the warm in the forties and fifties, and what happens is it brittles. It's very brittle on that mm -hmm. top layer, and that's what's making it the lifespan not be 15 years anymore it's like seven or eight years right so it's like half life of what our estimates and kevin's you know um you know chapter yep. 90 money the other yep. thing i didn't know just so the board is aware and even the residents is kevin educated me on this is when you use chapter 90 money for guardrails you're required to come up with speed compliant endpoints mm -hmm. which means that those ends are actually about 17 grand yeah, yeah. yeah seven thousand a piece seven thousand a piece so every section 000. you do of guardrail you're putting on these two ends in case a car makes impact with it Fourteen thousand just to start a guardrail point right whether it, it's 10 feet or 100 feet it's unbelievable yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah it is That's really there there is ways around it depending on the location it's probably yeah. the easiest way of saying mm -hmm. yeah we're creative at yeah. time yeah, we, yeah. yeah. nice to see you guys all right and thank you thank it's you. interesting that uh sugarloaf street which is not our street had a skim coat put on it and it's already developing problems and they didn't do the whole partial they didn't do the whole thing i'm sure that that's going to come up in conversation as we go forward so yeah all right thank yeah. you excellent thanks. thank you have a good night thank you very much um, next on our agenda is um, Chris Harris, Friends of Deerfield, and the 350th with Peter Thomas and Diane Martin. How's it going, guys? Yeah, well. Good to see you. Hey, Stan. Hey, Stan. Hi. If you want, you can. Peter and Diane, do you want to come up? Can move the table. Yes, you can. You can bring up some chairs. <laughs> Come on. Okay. <laughs> Peter and Diane, thank you for coming for the 350th, and thank yeah. you, uh, Chris, from flying all the way up from Texas. Uh, for this appearance, and Alex and Stan, you have done outstanding work all year, and we've had a lovely, lovely 350th yeah. celebration. So we're Thank you. really so pleased to hear about your update and what's happening still. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> just to get closer here. Yep. Um, yeah, so our purpose here is to give a very high level update spanning actually from January 1st, 2021 through the 31st of January of this year, 2024. Um, suffice it to say, we executed a lot of events yeah. in 2023. And I think people know them, speaker events and um, <clears throat> uh, Founders Day event and started with the Jubilee dinner dance and then uh, chicken barbecue, parade, fireworks, and, uh, and so forth. And then um, the Eastern um, European Heritage Festival. Uh, and then um, December 30th, the presentation of the 350th ceramic tile mural. Don't forget the open house churches. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. that, that, that happened in the 10th of December. Yeah. So um, I wasn't here for a lot of it, but yeah. um, well aware of what happened. And so 
I think the bottom line is it's a lot more than we originally planned or budgeted yeah. for, but yeah. we figured out how to do it and everybody came together. That's so, wonderful. I mean, that's the main point here. It was really good collaboration. Yep. The Friends of Deerfield with the 350th Steering Committee, the Select Board was very supportive, the Police Department supported us, the two fire districts did, the Highway Department, Frontier Regional School, because we're using that facility a lot for different things. Um, so that's what made it all happen and made it cost effective too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> The Friends of Deerfield actually raised during this whole period of time $148,000. Very nice. And that breaks down at about 120,000 in donations and 28,000 raised in other fundraising events such as raffles, merchandise sales, bar sales, event tickets for the Jubilee dinner dance uh, and the 18th June chicken barbecue. And we always tried to keep the price reasonable for those two big events yep. and to make other things free and accessible to all. That's wonderful. Um, I just want to say the target when we started this committee in 2019 was 100,000. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you very much for the 148,000 because um, with COVID, all the expenses, whether it was the fireworks or whatever, everything was gigantically increased in cost. Um, for our actual celebration. And so I, I can't thank you enough for stepping forward and making sure that it happened. So should it was also lovely. thank the uh, caterer. She, she was amazing. Yeah, so. Made so many events she pulled. pulled so that's through. my next point. <laughs> I, I estimate there's about $10,000 of in kind contributions, yeah. especially from Kathleen Thomas Catering she was and Berkshire, Berkshire Brewing Company. Yeah. yeah. And, because and those Berkshire. principals gave their time free. Yeah. in terms of planning, managing, right. and coordinating. Yep. Um, and, and they provided food and drink at cost. She was amazing. They were well, just the all, and, yeah. the catering was fabulous, but I have to say um, BBC was wonderful because yeah. you know, they, they have always been a good partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. so the other key contributions came in the way of facility usage, mm -hmm. the most notable being Deerfield Academy for the kickoff Jubilee uh, yeah. dinner dance and the June chicken barbecue, but also Frontier Regional for speaker events yep. and the uh, Eastern European um, uh, Heritage Festival. Uh, the Philadelphia Mummers performances there also. Um, and and that was really key to have the use of those facilities at very reasonable or no cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, there were hundreds of individual volunteer hours also. And specifically in support of the Friends of Deerfield um, or, organized events, um, I can call out Jennifer Remillard, Tim mm -hmm. Hilchey, and Jim Combius, yeah. original board members who did a lot of the upfront work to get the Friends of Deerfield moving with momentum. Um, clearly, these guys next to me, Stan Adams yeah. and Alex Hirschrader, uh, have done a lot of legwork that nobody knows about. I know about it because I was on the phone all the time with them. <laughs> yes, but, a lot. Um, just tons of hours. <laughs> a lot. And then Marie and, and Peter Thomas, and Diane yeah. and Jerry Martin, they were yeah. always there helping set up, tear down, organize things, wonderful. et cetera, wonderful. film, um, you know, the speaker wonderful. events, et cetera. Um, and my sister Robin Harris did a lot also. Yeah. So I know that <laughs> sounds a little crazy to uh, give kudos <laughs> there, but um, I'm sure I'm missing someone, but, but that's just, what my short list is. And remember the cake. Okay. <laughs> the cake was a, an interesting put up and take down and send oh, yeah. off to the next. Yeah. Yeah. So thank, thank you, Peter, for organizing that. Thank you. Our 350th that cake that is now on its way, uh, set up in Levert, has yep. been wonderful. But it got taken down and put up the same day. Oh, did it? Oh, oh my wow. gosh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, um, everybody that volunteered for that, that really great. Yeah, but I, I just want to say, um, Stan's flower arrangements and oh, the they're way beautiful. everything oh, and the beautiful. Rattles, rattles and then stuff. I saw Alex <laughs> in our uh, and when we did the um, ceramic um, yeah. unveiling, he had done the 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 bouquets and it was amazing. Yeah. It was really and Holly, Holly Lankowski doing the parade. She did yeah. a lot of work there. Yeah, a lot of people did so yeah, much. It was, we're just so and grateful. Kelly, yep, Kelly was had taken notes all year and posted yeah. meetings. And, it was really wonderful. 
So yeah. So so the Friends of Deerville Ice uh, project will end March with about thirty eight hundred dollars in the bank. Okay. Given all this extra stuff, et cetera, right. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Relative. Yeah. So we'll have to do some more fundraising this year in support of specific projects, but those projects will be much smaller in scale and very targeted. And, you know, so I don't think that's going to be a major issue. It'd be um, nice to see the, um, the talks continue in some way. Just those were fascinating. Just the history, you know, the things that you, you did, Peter, um, they just really hit home for me of like just trying to learn more about the history of Deerfield and, and the surrounding areas. It just, I, I loved it. I'd love to see it continue somehow. I, one, of the, one of the things that we intended to do was all of those talks were filled. Yep. So we're in Peter, the you have to speak into the mic, unfortunately, <laughs> so the people on the <laughs> can hear. Yeah, no, 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 Paul. Oh, don't pull it. Okay. <laughs> well, what, uh, they were all filmed, so we're, we're in the process of actually doing some editing on them. Okay. And then we're going to keep the web page, the DFL350.org web page open. Okay, great. For another year. Okay. So we're going to post all of those up there. Great. And if you're interested, I've got some research papers that are posted up there right now. Oh, on nice. Different elements in Deerfield. And I'm going to be doing some more of that. Great. Um, and there is one, the talk that I gave with the photographs. Yeah. Um, I excerpted out of that. So there's a short video up on the web page right now about roads and bridges. Okay. Um, oh, that were perfect. out of out How of timely. out of that long uh, <laughs> episode with the photographs. Yeah. So we wonderful. continue. I, I think we'll continue to keep it going. And uh, I love it. We're it. also um, beginning to work on the oral histories that we collected this past year. And, Great. Um, I've got a five-voice uh, podcast type of thing in the works right now. Okay. And it really focuses on um, Polish families yep. and farming. Great. And um, so we run the gamut from... Um, Walter Kanaki, who was 93, just passed away. Unfortunately, we got his two hours of an interview beforehand. And uh, the youngest person in there is Ashley Randall, who's our commissioner of agriculture. Okay, great. And she grew up on the old Setright farm and yeah. has a tradition of breeding cows and dairy cows. And, and so she's got a really good background, too. So we, great. we really span in terms of people's memories, almost 100 years Great. of agriculture in Deerfield. So Love that's it. coming along. Love it. That's, thank uh, you. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you, Peter. And also, just Peter, I want to thank you um, for shepherding, getting the uh, town records over yeah. the PVMA. It's kind of nice that it occurred in the 350th. So yeah, uh, that Good was work. another big achievement. Yes, that was dragged out for a few weeks but thank you peter and especially um emptying the humidifier day after day and um diane i also just want to acknowledge uh the wonderful walks that you organized like at clarkdale um i know we had some pictures and stuff well, and i mean there was that i actually just put a seed wow in his head. And that was it. you or it was your <laughs> idea to do those things it was just okay, approach good. people and uh it was great. Yeah. But it was great. I mean, the, the variety of activities and the events that occurred over the entire year from January 1st right to December 30th has been really amazing. Yep. Um, people, no matter what your interests were, there was something interesting. And, um, but I also want to say uh, we have the time capsule. And I know Rocky's been working on it. And um, so maybe you can tell us about what the plans are for the time capsule. Quickly. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, sure. Yeah, I can uh, quickly yeah. do that. Oh. Um, so um, we are working on trying to come up with a, a good date um, to end location to, to um, set the time capsule on the ground. Um, and we have uh, purchased and paid for um, a uh, granite bench. Um, oh, nice. And we're working on a proof that hopefully we'll get approved uh, Monday and um, we can get the ball rolling. That's um, great. We have a location, um, at least 
that I would like. Um, I, I think it's shared. I think it's shared amongst us. Um, just uh, right outside the town hall, um, on the grass space uh, near the um, sidewalk. So hopefully we can get some approvals going and uh, stake in the right. ground. Um, we're thinking either um, May, sometime in May, around Founders Day, yep. or um, in June. June eighth um, to, to to work uh, with the rec department. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, just oh, to yeah. get a few more people here. Yeah. So, um, oh, get the kids that's involved. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. I, yeah. However, you decide to do it. I'm really supportive because I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do, and we will not lose the location of the time capsule uh, with the bench. <laughs> <laughs> We, yep. That seemed to be a little bit of Can a problem. Can put an Apple tag the, in there. Well, hopefully we'll yes. GPS yes. it. Yeah, yeah, the battery yeah, GPS, GPS it. Yeah. Yes. You put an Apple tag in it. Yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But that's a Great. topic for um, the 26th uh, 350 steering yes. committee meeting yep. in February. I, I actually might be a little late for that meeting uh, because we have a finance committee meeting that night. So, <clears throat> But I will tr I'll be there as soon as I can. So just kind of wrapping up. You know, when we founded uh, the Friends of Deerfield, the mission was to fund and help organize and execute civic events for the enjoyment and education of the residents of Deerfield and surrounding communities. And I think we did a pretty good job so far Excellent. of doing that. And so I think having said that, um, we'd like to thank everybody that we acknowledged, but we'd like to thank our customers. Mm -hmm. And our customers were the residents of Deerfield who participated actively, yeah. and others from surrounding communities that knew and appreciated this town. Yeah. Um, and so thank you again. Well, it was really a fun year, and even the softball game was fun. And yeah, it, was it was great, great to win. It was great. <laughs> and the bell ringing. And the uh -oh, bell, bell ringing, ringing was so I mean, much fun. I, I have the I, autograph softball. You do. For great. The, uh, <laughs> time capsule. The time capsule. Great. It was great. Well, um, Northfield probably won't appreciate it. <laughs> we, well, we they, have a, it. they have a chance in 50 <laughs> years. They did a pretty good showing. They though. did. It was, they it did. Was, it, it was good. good. It was a good game. It started out looking like it wasn't going to be, but then it tightened right up. So yeah. that was good. <laughs> yeah. Just like my, uh, my thigh muscles. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good uh, heavy hitters on our, our side for sure, some professional uh, softball players. But great. Um, so, so with that, um, uh, Alex would like to present to Carolyn and the rest of us kind of join around uh, the plaque that we had uh, friends of you had made to go with the ceramic tile mural. Oh, good. Oh, so we have that yeah. here and That's um, wonderful. it'll yeah. soon go up. I, I know Judith couldn't make it tonight, but um, she's going to obviously see this on YouTube. So, um, so why so do we do that? Great. Jonathan, do you have a camera? No. I can't use my phone. I'll use this too. What's that? What's he saying? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Very nice. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yes. We should all. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is lovely. Oh, this yeah, that's what so the shot nice. looks like. So, um, there you go. Oh my gosh, this looks We'll really use nice. this to get a picture. Um, why don't you, uh, Peter, go a scoot in the book? Okay. Oh, you know what? We'll come yeah, here. Go. Careful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hold that pose. Smile. <laughs> Ready? All right. Hold it. Five. All right. You're good. Uh, <laughs> Let me just get a shot of that with the. Uh, my sure. We'll read it for everybody too. Hey, okay, you guys get back oh. there. I want to take a picture. You guys. Sorry. Yeah. Get in here. Oh yes, sir. Uh, Carolyn, why don't you go ahead and read it, and I'll 
Do you oh. want to do well, three? Yeah. Do you want to do three and then do yeah, six? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, come on in. Come on in. Okay. History flows. History. <laughs> are we ready? History flows like a river. Ceramic mural by Judith Lynn Inglis. This mural depicts the changing environment and the people who have lived along the rivers for the sum of 12,400 years since the glacial retreat. I think this is so lovely. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It really Thank is. You. And, and, and it so explains you know, so much. I work out with Judith, so Perfect. she's happy with the that's great. Uh, we're thrilled because this Love explains it. the mural. Right? And I, I think people, when they read that, will understand the mural. Very nice job, guys. Are you late? Is it? Are you going? Are you going? Are you going? Are you going? Oh, good. Oh, perfect. I'll just see it. I'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And thank you, Kevin, to facilitate well, making sure it gets you, hung. You can do that right now. I really appreciate <laughs> Love it. I have one more thing to talk about with you, Kevin, nope. before I leave. Time's, leave. Time's up. But really good. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, guys. Everybody, for Thanks. this was truly lovely. This I, I appreciate that so much. Put it in here. Thank you for coming. And Chris, a thank you for flying all across the country to make it happen. Um I just before Kevin leaves. Um, I had a meeting today, Kevin. Um, we're trying to get the conservation district to sponsor uh, the Vermont DOT and Mass DOT training at our highway garage sometime, I don't know, in May, maybe. September 13th, 14th, 17th. 17th. This is a training on uh, with uh, regenerative design is willing to do it because we're having a hard time getting someone from Mass DOT because I mean Vermont DOT to come down because they are, have been so busy mm. placing roads. This is the on the biofabric for uh, dirt roads. Right. No, it's a it's a great program and it and it really should be shared. Yeah. yeah. Um. So if we can get the tr we can pull the training together. I did volunteer the highway garage. Sure. And the idea was hopefully, um, you know, we could get our guys to be trained and go to the training since it's right in town right. so with minimal cost. Thank so, you. Thank you, Kevin. Easy. That was it. I just wanted to give you a heads up. We okay. have no date, but we have a commitment of a couple people already, but right. to do the training, but we, you know, it needs to be more. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Good. Thank have you. Good night. Kevin. Good night. Thank Thanks. you, Kevin. Bye. Um, you can dial in when you get home if you want. <laughs> yes, and you can. Uh, let's see. What can we do quick? Because we have we can public... hit the minutes. Yeah, uh, let's do the minutes. So I'll make a I'll make the a motion. Permits. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March twenty third, twenty twenty three. I will second that. Is there any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, July 3rd, 2023. Is there any discussion? No, I'll second it. Oh, Thank second. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And I'll make a motion to approve the July 12th, 2023 minutes. Second. Is there any discussion? Nope. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Kim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank okay. you all for putting those together. Really yeah, appreciate getting caught great. up. We're getting caught up. It's kind of scary. Yep. Um, the next item on the agenda I think we can sneak in is the Cumtick Valley Memorial Association craft fair permits yep. for review and uh, approval with a waiver. We usually normally mm -hmm. uh, waive the fee for them. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, craft fair uh, 2024 and the um, and the and the waiver of the permit. Yes, and uh, that is. I just wanted to. The craft fair is a, um, September twenty first and twenty second, I believe. Yes, it okay. is September twenty first, twenty second of two twenty twenty four. Yep. Okay. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? No. Hearing none. All those with in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great.
Um, another okay. item on the agenda is consideration to authorize uh, school superintendent uh, Darius Modesto to sign the contract and change orders for the entry project at the elementary school uh, as part of the MVP grant. I'll second that for discussion. I, I was just going to say I make that motion and you're going to second I'll it. I'll second okay. it. And then I just, um, I had talked with, with Darius and he, he obviously with any money change, he would come, come before us and talk to us if there's, you know, something different than what we've expected. So just for expediency. Him and I are on the MVP oh, uh, right. committee yeah. and we feel very comfortable with Darius. Yeah. Uh, handling and if there's anything that, the you know, he said, if there's anything that we need to do or sign, he will bring to Casey and uh, we'll I take care of it. So. I don't have any problem whatsoever. Great. Yeah, and since the both projects are supposed to work in tandem, it's good to have one point of coordination. Yeah, I feel very comfortable at Darius. We'll make sure we have a great, um, uh, a great project. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. All those in favor? In LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Okay. Oh, we're, we're zipping through, through this stuff. Yep. Um. um do you want to do the? Uh, yeah, we have five minutes left. The um, the, let's do the veterans. Yeah, the veterans, Upper Pioneer Valley. Um, I just want to make a motion to approve the um, Deerfield continuing to participate in the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District. This has yep. been very uh, beneficial to the uh, veterans in Deerfield. For sure, I'll second that motion. Any this further is, discussion? No, this is a request for the three-year approval, right? Uh, I believe. Well, let's it, see. It says requested a three-year approval from the Commonwealth. I think this is a two-year for this us. This is a two-year, I two believe. Two-year, right? Yep. And then the assessment's staying the same, where Greenfield pays 56% and all the other towns split the other 44%. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, good with this. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Let me just sign this, so... We know what's going on. Um, that is done. I can make a quick announcement that the Deerfield Rec Department 2024 Deerfield Recreation Co-Ed T-Ball for kindergarten and first grade. Um, so this is in a structural level for beginning pl beginner players. All children in kindergarten will play at this level. Most children in first grade will play at this level. The program will be a round robin style play meeting every Saturday at the Deerfield Elementary School. Schedules will be provided to the parents. Games will be played from uh, at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. amongst the Deerfield teams and other Union 38 teams. Uh, the program is designed for instructional learning, uh, fundamentals, basic game rules, um, you know, making it fun. No scores are, are capped. Uh, children will hit off a tee and all players will bat. Um, so there's a, a recreation department will provide bats, balls, helmets, and a team shirt and hat to be worn at all games. Um, the cost is $75. Uh, school choice add 25. If you're a child from school choice, uh, parents must provide a baseball glove, water bottle. Uh, practices one night per week beginning when the fields are ready. Games are April 20th through May 25th. So you, uh, registration was Monday, February 19th, but you could uh, also touch base with Sue Antonellis. Um, uh, let's see, at, uh, at, at the rec department here, 665 uh, one four zero zero extension one oh seven. Thank you. Um, I just we have a couple uh letters of support. One is the um, municipal empowerment act that we um discuss at the MMA, yeah. and then uh, of course, the creating a state disaster relief fund for emergency management. I wanted to make sure we had a written submission. Uh, okay, I had already testified for that, but um, I wanted to make sure. Uh, we had a letter of support, and Casey has that in the it file. It should here. be at the end of the signature file. Yeah. So, um, okay. I would make a motion to sign both of those that Casey has written up thank for you, us. Casey. Okay. Chris wrote them. Oh, thank you, Chris oh, and Chris Casey. And, oh. and uh, Chris. Casey. Okay. Uh, I will second that motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? G.I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, there you go. Okay. Let me sign those. Yes. Uh, no, we haven't done that yet. Uh, we have a couple minutes still. Uh, let's do the liquor license for Deerfield Academy one day liquor 
um, license for um, event at the Hess lobby five to nine on February 22nd. I'll second that motion. Is there any um, further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Jim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. No, this is different. So, so I don't know oh. if that it's an election. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, we can we yeah. can do that now if you want. Okay, yeah, let's do that now. <laughs> um this is uh for the election of unenrolled Gwen Russell and as Democrat uh Jane Biden Lund. Uh, this is to for the election officers in town that are willing to serve as election workers. Okay. I will make that motion. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Tim Ilchie, aye. Robert McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Here we go. Okay. I think we're caught up here. Yep. This is done. We have signatures. We probably don't have signatures yet on the... Um, grant stuff right we're just gonna you have, have to let the apply you have to approve them approve first yeah okay, okay. sounds good um yeah it is six you could authorize somebody a staff person to write to sign oh okay right it is 6 15 do we have yeah. um joe thomas adams available oh here he yep. comes he is okay. great we can get started all right uh what we're gonna do is it's a continuance of the dog hearing that we opened on February 7th. So we need to read the notice. On January 22nd, 24, 2024, notices this hearing was uh, sent pursuant to the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 157, to determine whether a dog owned by Mary Clayton Jones of 477 Greenfield Road in Deerfield, Mass., is a nuisance dog as defined by General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 136A. Um, if the board finds that the dog is a nuisance, it will determine what measures it shall order to um, make the case of the nuisance behavior under uh, General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 157B. The subject to be Discussed at the hearing will include, but not limited to the following, a complaint submitted by Joel Thomas Adams dated July 3rd, 2023, in which he alleged that a dog owned by Mary Clayton Jones of 44, I mean, 477 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass, has refused to control the dog, leaving it tied to a post on the porch, result, resulting in a great deal of barking affecting neighbors. The hearing will be held pursuant to the, um, Visions of General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 157. You may appear on your behalf or with an attorney or call, call and question witnesses and present evidence. Copies of all reports and other records that may be discussed during the hearing will be provided by Ms. Clayton Jones. So we're going to open and read the documents. Um, every, anyone uh, that's going to give evidence, they need to... Um, uh, raise their right hand and repeat after me that I, they need to state their name. Um, Joe, Joel. I'm here. Okay. You need to state your name and swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. My name is Joel Thomas Adams, and I do swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank okay. You. Um, Mary, are you going to... Um, or Kate, I, I know, I know you as Kate. But... Moni, come right up, come right up and you have a seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the mic can hear you. Yeah. Yep. The, the testimony that you are about to provide is the whole truth. I swear that the testimony that I'm about to provide will be the whole truth, and my lawyer is present. Okay. Oh, great, great. We have um, a letter from. Joel um, from the July July 3rd and October 30th. And that's what we have so far. Madam okay. Chair, if I, good evening. Good evening. Before you get into testimony, uh, before you get there, you can keep doing what you're doing, but if you could give me a, a little bit of airtime, that'd be great. 
Um, okay. Sure. We've opened the hearing, so. You referenced the July, uh, a June 30th letter. I only have the July 3rd. No, I have a July 3rd and an October 30th. Oh, I don't have October 30th. Okay. We can make sure you get a copy of that. It's um, basically the same complaint. It just is uh, notifying us that we um, should be doing something about it. Okay. Same person, same complainant? Yes. Okay. And thank you. And just very briefly, I believe that the, the scope of this hearing should not include anything that's already been heard and just. And, and we've all discussed and it's been disposed of. It looks like everybody's in agreement just yeah. to not reopen the, the prior incidents. No, yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons this is, had been delayed. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, Joel? Yes, what would you like me to do? Um, well, you need to tell us uh, your side of the story. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. I think everyone in this room has many more weighty things to be dealing with, and I appreciate you taking the time to deal with this. It's not something that I would bring before you if it weren't so extreme and so prolonged and so egregious. Um, about 18 months ago, we noticed, because it was such an unsettling sound, the kind of wild, desperate barking of a dog down below us at the old Deerfield Garden Center. We thought the dog was injured or that something was wrong and went down to see <clears throat> and realized that the dog at that point was tied to a post on the front porch of the building. We called the police because we thought something was wrong. The officer who went to that home at that time was told by the person who answered the door that there was no dog in the house. So I think it's important to underscore that this began with an act of kind of egregious um, mendacity. We went down the next day and took a picture of the dog and took a video of it barking um, and then called again. And at that point, I think the police were aware of the situation and that it was going to be complicated. Over time, we've talked to the animal control officer several times. We've called the police a couple of times at one and two and three o'clock in the morning. And what has become Frustrating is simply the fact that none of these people seem to be able to have an effect on what is clearly a breach of the town's bylaws. And this is a dog that is available that we can hear audibly clearly inside our home with all the windows closed. I can hear it in the basement of our home. It barks sometimes for hours and hours and hours at a time. It barks early in the morning, accompanied by an equally, it sounds at least like an equally psychotic rooster that also goes on for hours and hours, sometimes very late at night, sometimes during the daytime. But what never changes is that at least for prolonged periods of time, every day, this dog barks. And we can hear it in our home. It's a deep disturbance to us. It's a very unpleasant sound. My wife has migraine headaches. Um, sometimes she has to endure the dog barking while she's trying to deal with the migraine headache. I work at a desk at a window facing the house, and it's often difficult to work because of the noise of this dog. Um, could you explain or describe to us that um, just the geology of, um, I mean, the, not the geology, I'm thinking of. <laughs> no, I understand what you mean. We, we live on, uh, we live on. Um, yes. Where your we house live. is in relation to, um, you did say that you um, are a neighbor, but wh where are, where is your house in relation to the garden center? Our house is on Pleasant Street, at Pleasant Avenue, which is above the garden center. It goes up behind Richardson's Candy Kitchen, Pleasant Street does, and we're right on the west facing side of the railroad. So there's a kind of perfect amphitheater below us that transmits the sound from this dog to our house. Um, so, and about how far away is that, do you think? Uh, 150 yards, 100 yards. Okay. Um, and, and you did relate to that the dog is barking every day? Or... There's never, never been a day in the last 18 months that this dog is not barking, that I know of. 
and our experience every day is to hear it barking at various times during the day. And um, in particular, you know it, it is this dog? This oh, yes. Yeah, it's a very distinct sound because the dog has a very deep booming voice and it sounds like it's panicked or it's distressed. And so the sound is um, more disturbing than just a dog repeatedly barking. Um, and there's no other dogs in the neighborhood that could be confused with this? Not at all. Okay. We also walk on a daily basis and we often walk by the uh, sugar house. And so you know, the, the, the voice of the dog is very familiar to us. Trevor, did you have I was going to ask, do you, um, have you heard from anybody else that this is a nuisance? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of a unique that. situation where we are because of our how we're situated above the garden center. But mm -hmm. I have colleagues that live at Deerfield Housing just across the way and down the street, and they both said they both expressed some exasperation about the dog. Um, they do hear it, yes. But I think the traffic sound, there aren't many houses actually around it, and the traffic sound probably drowns it out for people up and down the road, but it comes up here extremely audibly. Mm -hmm. When you're in your house can uh, and you have the TV on or the radio or music, whatever, um, can you still hear the dog over above? Yes. Um, all right. Did it, Tim, do you have any questions? Um, no. Other than uh, wait, waiting for the, you know, uh, any other testimony from um, dog owner, uh, I'd like to afterwards hear from hear from our attorney about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kate, would you like to um, talk now? Um, Kate, I have four big dogs. Kate, excuse me for one second. Yes. So let's, it's, it's hard because I'm not there, but let's just address um, what the complainant has said and talk about this noise. And I mean, I think the he's complaining about the noise, but he's also saying, because he said it five times, that the dog is panicked, exasperated, and distressed and that there's a distressed rooster there. So he seems to be saying not just the noise, but that these animals are not being treated right. Can you address that? Because that's pretty serious. I think he was just qualifying the um, seriousness of the or, or the distinctiveness of the bark. Okay. We can't... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not making any claim at all about how the dogs are being treated. My complaint is the nature of the sound and how intrusive it is. I think we did establish that um, he is hearing the sound in his house and it okay. is invasive. Uh, I think. And not making a claim on how the dog's being treated. Okay. I think that's what Correct. we're here to discuss. Yep. Great. Kate, then feel free to speak. You heard what he said, but I would start off with what the animal control officer uh, said to you on February 7th. So I have four big dogs. I have a St. Bernard. I, Kate, have, I think we should focus on whatever dog he's talking about. Right. If you know. I, have, I have a Great Pyrenees. I have a Black Lab. And I have a mixed dog. And they all bark. And so I'm curious as to which dog in particular he is speaking about. Every one of the dogs barks, you're right, and I do hear dogs barking, but there's one dog, and I don't, I don't, it's a, it's a big dog, either the St. Bernard or the Pyrenees, that barks with a very deep, booming, repeated sound, and that's the sound that really, really penetrates, and it's the sound that we hear all the time, different times of day and night. You, you live at the home, right? I, I do. So, you know the dogs bark, right? I assume. So do, do you have an idea of which dog is barking? Um, my... that, that people are, you know, concerned with? I would like to say yes. Okay. But to be quite honest, my dogs bark at different times. They don't bark because they're yappy. 
They bark because there's something out there. We have coyotes, we have fisher cats, we have um, other things. These are large guardian dog breeds. And so they are designed in their breed to protect the livestock. They bark when there is something that is scaring or worrying them. They don't stand there and bark at pedestrians walking by but, or cars. But I, I think the testimony was they bark for hours on end, not, you know, hey, there's a coyote out there. I'm going to bark and rustle at it and then go lay down. I think the testimony was that they're barking for hours on end. Do, do you recognize that? No, because I sleep there and I don't hear my dogs barking for hours on end. Because if they were barking for hours on end, they would drive me crazy and I wouldn't be able to sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, what about during the day? Are you, are you there or not? Um, are you asking me? I, no, I, I'm asking I, um, Kate. Thank you. I oftentimes work from home. My dogs do have a dog house that they hang out in. We have a huge arborvitae that they sleep under. They go in and out of the house as they as we allow, mm -hmm. right? They are not, most of the time we come home, they're fast asleep. So I understand that when they get upset, right, that they do bark. And usually if we are home, we call them in or we go out and find out what's bothering them because nine times out of 10, it's something that's trying to eat one of the chickens or what did you call it? A, 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 one of our roosters. We have roosters. We are a farm. We have chickens. We have eggs, right? I believe that Deerfield is a right to farm town. Yeah, and, that's, not, that's not an issue here. Right. And one of the ways to keep your flock intact is to have livestock guardian dogs. Mm -hmm. We have livestock if, guardian dogs. If I may, I don't think that the putative motivation for these dogs barking is at issue here. I think what's at issue here is the town bylaws. And the town bylaws are very clear about sound and disturbance. And it's simply not credible that the threat of a coyote or some sort of predator is responsible for an animal barking Liter I have timed it up to four hours. It has been at two o'clock in the morning. It has been at five o'clock in the morning. It goes on for hours. It's not worth it to pursue something like this unless it's a very extreme situation. And this is extreme. We hear this dog constantly. And I would invite any of the select board to just drive down five and 10 and stop and park in the country store on any given day or night. And you're probably going to hear it too. And you'll see what I mean. Are there any recordings submitted of the barking or time stamped? It's been happening for 18 months. Is there any recording submitted? Uh, I, I have not seen a recording yet. Okay. I have not seen one. One thing, and I know Kate is sort of giving her testimony, but one thing in cases like this that we've dealt with before is when there's a valley like this, that uh, the homeowner, there's, you can put up uh, sound, sound, you can soundproof your, your home to stop the noise from coming, or at least to mitigate it with, there's either certain landscape fences that will block noise or dampen it, or um, certain trees will absorb the noise and prevent that, any noise from the valley coming up to the Mr. Thomas Adams house. Um, is that a possibility? I don't know the with, landscape. With every respect, I, I think it's absurd to suggest that it, it's my responsibility to protect myself against this violation of a town. I didn't violence. ask that. I just asked if that's a possibility. I, I don't really see how it would be practicable. It's, I can't imagine what would bar this sound out, except for something that would be even more intrusive. And again, I don't think that's my responsibility. And I, I didn't say it was in that. And that's why I just asked the question of everybody based on the landscape. Can you put trees there to try to buffer it out? I, I should also point out that every time that I've, you know, several times for a while until we realized it wasn't going to do any good. When we'd call the police, the dispatchers were very familiar with this. It wasn't news to them. It wasn't a surprise. Kate, why don't you go on and share, like I said before, the what the animal control officer said to you on February seventh, and in in the idea that they're they're coming into your driveway, they're parking there during the day, 
to, to witness for themselves and he, you can share what the animal control officer shared with you. So um, with all due respect, we actually don't feel very welcome or loved or appreciated in the town of Deerfield. Um, we have had the police park on both ends of our driveway several times. In fact, the other night when I was coming home, I couldn't get into my driveway because there was a police officer sitting in my driveway. I've had the animal control officer literally park inside, in front of my house, not ring, not knock, not say anything, but just sit there and listen. And in fact, on February 2nd, my partner walked out of there to say, excuse me, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I'm here because you have a hearing. And we said, yes, we have a hearing coming up. And he looked around and he said, everything looks fine here. I see nothing of issue. Right. My dogs happened to be sleeping at the time. Right. And he said there was no issue here. Right. We asked if any other complaints had happened. He said, no, we haven't received any other complaints. And so we are getting a lot of misinformation or different information here. I certainly can understand how Mr. Thomas does not like the fact that there seems to be a sound pipeline that takes any noise, roosters, chickens, dogs, whatever, up to his front door. I can completely understand how upsetting that is. I would be happy to offer to buy noise canceling headsets if that would actually help the matter. The reality is though, is, is that we do not feel safe in our house because we have people continually, literally parking in our driveway, monitoring us to make sure that something is or is not going wrong or right. And it feels really, really uncomfortable. I would love to go home. I did not set my house on fire. I haven't been able to build a home right now. I came into Deerfield because I wanted to build a business there. I wanted to build something in a derelict building that had not had anybody living in it for many, many years. I had hopes and I had dreams, but I have to tell you, it's really hard to have hopes and dreams and offers of employment and stuff like that when you have police people parking on either side of your driveway on a regular basis. Now, I understand that that's a big freeway and maybe they're doing traffic stops. I get it. I also understand that the coffee shop got robbed a couple of months. I get why you're doing it. I'm not offended by it. I actually like your police force. But at a certain point, when you feel like you're being targeted by somebody who doesn't like the noise of your dog that is barking dogs, because I couldn't point the finger and say it's Theo. It's not Theo. I have four big dogs. They talk. Well. So to follow up on your um, council's uh, question, um, have you taken photographs of the police in the course of these events that uh, are occurring near your property? I took a picture the other day, right? And my partner actually sent my council the, uh, the incident with the animal control officer. The fact that the sheriff has parked a tag right on my door says that they're coming to my door, right? And I would be happy to do that. Like I said, I'm not offended with the fact that they're watching traffic and stuff like that. It just feels that when you get a notice that, you know, somebody is complaining about your barking and then the police happen to be hanging by and then the animal control officer comes by and happens to park in your driveway, it just doesn't feel like you're being loved and 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 welcomed. It's it, I mean, just it's well, not about well, it's being loved and welcome. It's yes. really about um, uh, we have we have a violation of the bylaw, right? So we're you know I think for me I'm trying to understand. Um, Can you please explain to me what the, the violation of the bylaw? It's a noise is. bylaw. Okay. Yeah. So we can give it to you, um, but there is a, you know, dogs cannot be a nuisance and continuously bark. It's part of our bylaws, town bylaws. Has nothing to do with your specific, it's just, it, it's in it's in the rules to protect neighbors and to make sure that people are, you know, not, not having to hear that constantly in their homes. And if it's a, you know, one-off kind of thing or a couple of times, I think this has been, from what the complaint that we've had is a long-term um, it's, it's been going on a long time and it's for long durations at a time. So I think our, our point is to gather information and to understand, you know, we have this report, we need to, is this valid? 
We have your your report is yours valid. We we just need to gather the information, and we may need to continue this as we and we, need... we gather further information. If there's other people that have made complaints, or if there's other people that have an issue that you know haven't sent it in or have sent it in, or if people you know. And the animal control officer and the police are just verifying whether the dog's barking or not. But I, also I understand that. And at the end of the day, I have a farm and I use a livestock guardian dog to protect my flock. If what I am hearing is that livestock guardian dogs are not allowed in the town of Deerfield because the way that they protect the flock is to bark, then that is a that is a very clear explanation of of the way that uh the town of deerfield writes their bylaws yeah right and and i'm i understand that but you have to understand that it is my home right and i got burnt out of my home so i might be a little gun shy about a whole bunch of things here with due reason because i am in a sense a displaced person who's just trying to get home and we're doing the best that we can so in an awkward situation so i apologize for that I, I can see that Mr. Cohen wants to speak. I just want to jump in with a quick procedural yeah. point. Um, the hearing that's been noticed tonight is to determine whether there's been a violation of Chapter 140, Section 157, specifically whether a dog that's um, owned or kept at 477 Greenfield Road is a nuisance within mm -hmm. the meaning of Chapter 140, Section 136. I know that there's a lot of things we might get into some other issues, but I, I just want to remind the board and Mr. Cohen and Ms. Clayton Jones that what we're here to determine is, is whether there's a dog on the property that's being a nuisance um, in line with the complaint that was submitted to the board. And so while, of course, the board can consider everything, I think ultimately the decision for the board is going to be whether the dog is a nuisance and if it's a nuisance, what remedial action is going to be ordered. Correct. Um, and so if there's no, in my mind, if there's no further um, testimony, uh, one way or the other. I'd like to close the hearing. I I just want to hear from yeah, Mr. Cohen. I would like to be heard too before you close it. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the animal control the police have been going by, and, and part of the investigation into this these allegations. Have you? Have they supplied anything in either either way, a report or a comment or an opinion as to whether this is happening or not? No, we we have not been able to verify that it's been happening. And is that because we've actively asked them to no. report? No. I think what you're saying is that right. nobody has issued a report. And I feel like and they haven't been asked. So and I feel like this board hasn't request um a little nervous closing the hearing because I feel like we haven't really gathered enough information yet. I think we're hearing a couple of different points, but we haven't truly asked for a report from the from the animal control officer, or police. That do do we have any other evidence to support this or not? Um, to my knowledge, the animal control officer has not witnessed anything, mm -hmm. and there has been nothing in the police log to verify that. Have we asked that? any monitoring take place? I mean, no. I, no, you know, what you're answering, monitored. Carolyn, is I don't think what's being asked. So, um, you know, I I had a similar question about, um, you know, what Kate had referenced, you know, is there, he doesn't have recordings, Mr. Thomas Adams doesn't have recordings. You took one picture of the police, is that what you said, I, or did I miss? So I think maybe we need to ask some questions of, you know, um, there's bittersweet across the road. There's, you know, so is, has an investigation actually taken place to try and verify any of this? The immediate neighbors across the street are commercial, unfortunately. Right. You got Richardson's, you have a daycare and um, country store and bittersweet. They are closed at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I, from my under, understanding, this happens throughout. It's a 24-hour thing. It can happen at any time, obviously, if a lot of it's happening at night, Mr. Adams, uh, Thomas Adams, is that what you're experiencing? Is it more likely to happen at night than the daytime? It, it happens regularly at every time of day or night. I have also twice spoken when I have called because it's so late at night, the police on two occasions, the police have said, we can hear the dog barking, but no one's answering the door. 
And, and there so, should be a few police reports on this then, yeah. right? And we should probably gather that. Yeah, we could. We could make sure that they- Yeah, because I'm certain that I couldn't make a decision about what's actually happening based on what I've heard tonight. So, um, so I think, yeah, I don't think we should be closing the hearing. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm not just- what would you do you want to the, ne the next step would be to continue the hearing to a date in the future and gather information from police and a patrol officer any other witnesses that they want to if if the board's inclined to entertain a motion to continue the hearing it should do so to a date and time certain so right. that everyone knows exactly when it will be reconvened and continued um and any additional information can be gathered. I, I also just want to note there's been some discussion between the parties, a little crosstalk about whether there's some kind of agreeable resolution that they could come to between them that might lead to the dropping of the complaint. Mm. I usually know that boards encourage people, if possible, sure. to do that. Um, if Absolutely. you want to make a statement on the record in that regard, I think it makes sense. But otherwise, I just wanted to advise you that may be something that happens in the interim as well to keep an eye out for. We okay. And I, I wanted to ask a question of council. Um, this is a right to farm community, but could a dog be a right to farm dog and still be a nuisance is a, is a question. I mean, can both both things be true? Yes. I mean, I, I could I could be farming and have uh, chickens, and if they routinely cross into my neighbor's properties and eat their tomato plants, I'm still causing a nuisance, notwithstanding my legal right to have chickens on my own property. So it, it can happen in a variety of different ways, but generally speaking, Yes, notwithstanding, like anybody, you have a legal right to have a dog on your sure. own property, but if it causes a nuisance to someone else, it can still be in violation of the law. Okay, thank you. So, um, does I, I guess I would in, I would encourage if there's any way for the parties to come up, as our attorney said, come up with a resolution short and short of you know continuing the hearing. But I would I would make a motion to continue the hearing until. Um, I don't know when our next uh, well, meeting in I March would be. To, a, a, we have to, I would like to give it at least a month. Right. Um, in case there's more issues as well. Are we meeting on the 20th, it looks like? We yeah, are. we're meeting on the 20th. Uh, do we have the ability on the 20th to have this hearing continue? I think we can schedule that. Okay. 20th of March? Yes. Yeah, I will be yeah. away. You'll be away? When will you be, uh, in just that one week or is there... Okay, so if we did it the following week or something, uh, we'd have April third. Uh, April third. Yeah. April third is the next regular meeting. Okay. And so what I can expect is police and animal control officers and recordings. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, we're going to ask the police to go through their logs and say, you know, have we been called out for this? And verify that they've um, observed the whatever market. evidence there exists in the record at this point. That's not to say that, um, you know, I know that the police sit in the Williams parking lot frequently. Um, it's big, it's big. Yeah, it's a big parking lot and uh, they park there for their duties. Um, maybe they hear the dog at that point. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just I just think we need more more corroborative evidence um, that, you know, this has been reported constantly uh, before I would be comfortable yeah, help hiding on this. That fine with me. So, do we have a motion then? If the, yes, I'll uh, make a motion hearing. to continue the hearing until um, April third at um, five thirty again or six. I don't know what we have planned. That we night. had it started. I believe Chris can confirm this, but I believe it originally started at six fifteen, and this continuance okay. was to the same time. Let's do it again. Six fifteen again. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then if there's me, are you available that day? I am. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I would certainly encourage if it were possible for the, you know, the complainant and the, the dog owner to come to some agreement, but it would have to be reasonable. Um, the suggestion that somebody should wear noise canceling headphones in their house doesn't seem reasonable to me, but thank you. Absent anything that doesn't disrupt their, you know, free and fair use of their property. You know, let's see what we can find. Mr. Thomas Adams, <clears throat> um, I have your email address from the complaint. May I contact you in the days ahead? Yes. Okay. See Great. if we can yes. figure this out. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. All those in favor? 
Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Cohen. Thanks thank very much, you. Thomas Adams. Thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you. thank you, Joel. Um, and thank you, Matt. Thank yes, you. thanks for your guidance and help. No problem. I appreciate that very much. All right. If uh, if you don't need anything further from me, I will head out. But I'm happy to stay if you've got. No, me. we're we're good. We're thank good. you very much. Thanks. Uh, we'll still have the same questions, I'm sure. Yeah, touch uh, base a little so, bit. I'll stay in touch with Casey about that. Okay. Yeah, and if if you can give any advice about what we should be asking of the agencies that might, you know, what evidence they can provide to us, that would be helpful rather than us trying to figure it out. I'll coordinate with Casey and see if we. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Um, we have Tilton Library here. Let's. Yeah. We could. Yep. We could have you a few minutes early, or Would do that, you want to wait? Are you waiting for anyone? Yeah. Okay, we oh, can okay. continue Let's to wait. work until you're ready. Yeah, okay. anytime she's here. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Oops. Um, okay. So what else do we have? Do you want to do the ramp? Do we? Uh, escape. We have the. Um, we have the Robleski. Yeah. Uh, notice of intent to sell. I was trying oh, to figure out uh, where that property is. Here, here right here, Trevor. Do you have a map? Oh, you do yes. have a map. This is uh, five and ten Mill Village. This is kind of just usual that strip oh, back. Yeah. What, so they're looking to sell that. Um. Yes, I believe they. I mean, not for, well, it doesn't matter for what, but I didn't know if it was animal commercial shelter. or. Oh, okay. And apparently, an animal shelter. That was the old drive-in. What does it have for frontage? Um, it's. It's like 450 feet or something. I know I mean, it's, it's wet a, in here. It's wet, yeah. And it, it, the water runs across, but I was looking at the high area at one point for, you know, this a was spot it, or it, it, is, is this the way there was suggested pot location, or am I confusing that with something? Yeah, well, this is Mill Village. This is the Yankee Candle distribution. Right. This is the next. Next That's parcel. a nice piece of property. It goes up is, in the back, but it is Yankee, wet in the middle. It is a Yankee corporate. Mm -hmm. It it is um it is used in agricultural right now, mm -hmm. um, but it is a little bit difficult to develop. Up in the back yeah, is a nice dry. spot. This is dry. That's where there's so have to build on in sixty one A. They have to pay back taxes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. And they, we have they a, had a tax first rate of because, refusal, right? Right. I I. As much as I would love to have a little chunk of land with it doesn't mean we need it. I don't I don't feel like it. I looked at it a while back. Or it was even it doesn't matter what the purpose of it is, but it's nope. a, is it a commercial, residential? I think it's commercial. It's it's in RA. Uh, residential agricultural. Well is, uh, the card should be in your packet. Uh, it would what say the, on the plan card. is for it, you mean? No. Or oh no, the spot. What it what it's what it is. Coded as. Right, right. Um, I believe there is a card, I think, okay. because I was sorry. Yeah, I, think you're right. I think it's commercial too, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, I don't know what it's going to be. We, uh, we have the zone map up. Somewhere, don't we? Um, it should, if you look. Oh, here's the, the card. Yeah, there should be a card in the paperwork. Yep, and it is. Um, where am I looking? Utility code? No, it's water. It is. Neighbor code GC, land use. Look at the property record. Zone I, industrial, right? Uh, or is it zone one? I can't tell. Zone one, but it should. No, that's not, it's not industrial. If it's, wouldn't it be industrial if it's I? It's I. Uh, it is I, right? It is. It is. I, I believe it's I. And it is right next to one of the Yankee Candle buildings. Yeah. The queen to it, industrials. Yeah. And that's yes. not commercial? Trevor, just verify it. So if they're going to build an animal shelter. According to Bob, it is a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if it's something If it's, an, if it's industrial. Stuff. It's industrial. So it's, that's it's, allowed. It, is allowed it, it's not not something that needs ZBA approval of a special permit. Or... We don't know that. Yeah. We have no idea. They can take it out for whatever reason they want. Yeah, that's not that's, that's not that's really the material. purview of the question. Right. This right. particular question. The question is, do we want 
to waive our right of first refusal or not? And do we want to sign off on it? So, not that I want to delay this or anything. Um, I'd be interested to, and uh, and again, if I'm not supposed to know this, just tell me. But it would be interesting to know how long has this property been in 61A? What is the tax consequence we to the have that? That is in here. Is is it? See, I don't know if I have everything. That you it, have. Um. I mean, it was sold in 2007. Yep, and prior to that, it was sold in 2002. Okay, and then, and then there was a gap between 1963 and 2002. But has it been in? Has it ever been removed from 61A? I don't. So that, I don't know. And I don't. Um, the, it's it, strangely enough, a lot of the information you're asking is Board of Assessors information. Yeah. And they don't actually get this information until you make a decision about this. And I think you know they're looking to close on first, so we don't really have much time because they're going to need to move. Um, well, you know, the reason why I ask these questions is because yeah. if it had been in 61A for 50 years or whatever, and the the property was going to sell for 135000 and and we could acquire it for what's owed in the back taxes, you know, yeah, no. then, you know, it's it's like, seems like information we want, but if it's not something we're allowed to have, that's... No, no it's not that it's, we can, ha we can ask, but I don't know... I mean, I'm not saying I can't the see land. the 61A information here. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I'm yeah. looking at the property record card online. Yeah. So they want to close on March 1st. Yeah, that's what the paperwork shows. Um, it looks like the description. They didn't. The stuff that's on here is from 1984. Um, This is the Office of uh, Board of Assessors, Agriculture and Horticultural Land Tax Lien. So that probably was when it went in, is January 25th, 1984. They would have put these, these two, there were two parcels, uh, yep. 6.8 and 6.19 that were put in um, January 25th, because this would be the lien. That would be the only lien, you'd have an agricultural lien, right? right. So that would be uh, January 25th, 1984, they went in. So it's been in there for quite some time. Yeah. Yep. 40 years. Yep. Um, not, you know. But it, it's truly been agricultural that whole time. But no, but right. But I'm just, I'm not questioning that. But when you, when you take it out of 61A, there is a payment. Yep. So. Roll back. Yeah. So they're going to go back to 1984 if that's when it was put in. Correct. And there's going to be a tax consequence. And I was just wondering, you know. So that's something that the Board of Assessors would develop. Um, yeah. That's why they don't see it until after the board makes a decision on the waiver and the um, right of first refusal. So I'm good. I'm good with it. I, I, as much as you know, we, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I yep. mean, no, it's good. Good question. I think. I mean, <laughs> one of the questions that I actually had when I worked in another town was, "What would you use it for if if you didn't waive your right of first refusal?" Yeah, and know, that's I, the question. Well, what I was looking at was the was the parcel, and could you really do any? I was looking at senior center, like different things like that. Could you build anything up there? But there really is. There's a valley there. You can put something on it, but um, it it just wasn't good. I, it's not big enough, I think, for say, if you had to build a new school or something like that for town use. So I just think we would. We yeah, would I mean, it's it's that. sitting next to a commercial property Correct. that's a truck. Yep, there's two two spots. Is it, is it a Yankee Candle so trucking house, thing? There's a couple houses on that road and then one up at the end, but most of it is a plain, plain road. Plain road, right. yep, yep. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I could, we could wait. Keep moving here. No, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to do whatever yep. people think. So, well, I would make a motion that we, um, I, I mean, I didn't, once Casey printed out the map, I was a little confused which parcel it was because mm -hmm. it was not listed with the, it says zero Greenfield Road. And right. I wasn't sure what parcel it was. Right. But once she printed out the map, I was you familiar know, with it. Was, and yeah. um, there has been, People tried to develop this over a period of well, forty years. Yeah, forty years. Yeah, and there's been different um, things that people have uh, brought forward, and um, they never really 
Okay. I mean, I, I just don't think this is something that would fit into anything that we would be. No, I agree with that. And I think, um, I mean, we're I focused we're, here in the South Deerfield Village Center. I know. I'm always just looking for space down the road if you ever have to do something. But um, but that's fine. No, that's good. Um, I so guess they could have frontage off a of plain road or off. I mean, they'd have to get yes. a curb cut on 5 and 10, and that'd be a tough spot to get a curb cut. I assume they would enter off a of plane, but that's not up to us. That's down the road. Okay. So, yeah. so are we... Or are we being asked to to waive our right of first yes. refusal? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So and the hundred and twenty day period, and the hundred and twenty day period because they want to move on it. And yep. I I mean we're going to make the decision at oh, me yeah. waiting one hundred and twenty days. Here it says not... right right in here, nineteen eighty four, January twentieth, nineteen eighty four. Yeah. So um, do you want me to make a motion? Yes. So I make a motion to waive and release the right of first refusal and assignment pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter sixty one A. For um, we, the select board of the town of Deerfield, holder of a right of first refusal and or assignment on a portion of the premises identified on the Deerfield Assessor's Map as parcel 132-3 by virtue of an agricultural land tax lien in favor of the town of Deerfield, dated January 20th, 1984, and recorded with the Franklin County Register of Deeds in Book 1781, page four, met and a quorum in attendance on February 21st, 2024, and upon motion duly made and seconded, uh, voted and waived 120-day uh, period during which such option may be exercised and vote, voted to release and not exercise all rights of first refusal nor any rights of assignment pursuant uh, Let's see, pursuant to said lien in and to the premises, more particularly described in a deed recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds, book uh, 4069, page 112. Specifically, the town of Deerfield he hereby gives notice that it shall not exercise its option to purchase the parcel of land at full or fair market value and that it hereby waives and releases all other rights under chapter 61A with reference to said uh, parcel of land. Second. Um, is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn Ness, aye. And then uh, it'll be executed on this day, February 24th, 2024, we'll sign. And then there is a, um, there is also on this day, February, uh, on this day, the 21st of February, 2024, before me, the undersigned notary public. Oh, this is for a notary. Yep. We don't need to deal with that. That's okay. great. Okay, good. Who's going to verify that we saw it? Okay. And then the assessors will deal with the, um, we're not giving up the taxes. Or no, no. They What they do is once this is signed, um, we make them aware of it, and then they do the calculations on yep. behalf of the owner. Okay, um, it is seven o'clock and I'm assuming everyone is here from the library. Okay, why don't you come up? Uh, you have to speak into the mic so that everybody can hear you in our TV land here. Welcome. Thank you. How are you all? You're just I'm getting just excited for the project. Oh yeah, we yeah. are. It's happening. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry, Pinch we just me, right? left out four minutes here for two <laughs> seconds. Okay. Um, yes, welcome. And um, so we're here to talk about the warrant article. Um, I think this is the same warrant article that we've had for a while. <laughs> Yes, right. the warrant article did not change, but we added the memo that was requested to talk about the request and give a little background to the rationale for the request. All right. Yeah, I think because we had brought this up, I mean, COVID really interrupted what a lot of this yeah. discussion. <laughs> um, so why don't, um, why don't you summarize um, what's happening 
um, exactly so that people can hear about it for the town meeting. So the issue was raised way back in 2016 when we were first moving forward with the library project about the ownership of the library. And during that research by town council, it was discovered that um, the um, entities that the library had developed over many years, um, we have two separate entities. We have the Tilton Trustees and then we have the Tilton Fund Inc. of which um, membership is um, on both sides are the exact same members. And it was recommended that we alter that because we shouldn't have the exact same members in each organization. And so in order to correct that, um, we need to go back in and change um, some of the documents that have to be filed in probate court. Um, and so this is the first step to be able to allow council to do that. It's a little bit of a challenge because of how do we represent both these groups because we are all the same membership. Um, and so um, we've been working forward and we're prepared to now do that. Um, one of the other things that happened over time before any of us were on the board was the membership had been increased, um, although it didn't follow the bylaws. And so our goal is to reduce that membership and then make it a clear membership of seven for the Tilton Library. Um, so that there is a number that would be great for forums. And then when the two organizations are separated, the Tilton Fund Inc. will have its own membership and then we'll revise our bylaws so that um, it's very clear about our, our purpose. Yep. Yeah, okay. so you have one one kind of committee running the library and the other one kind of running the fund. The fund raising aspect yep. that um, yep. Just to clarify, why don't you introduce yourselves and um, in what you are doing as a trustee or, you know, a library. <laughs> but, okay. I'm Nancy Maynard. I'm uh, a permanent trustee and also the chair of the Tilton Funding. So involved with the capital campaign of raising the funds for the expansion project. I'm Candace Bradbury Carlin. I'm the director of the Tilton Library. I'm Jim Cambius. I'm one of the elected trustees. I'm Satu Zoller. I'm a trustee and I'm chair of the board of the trustees. I'm Cindy Von Platern and I'm on the Tilton Fund and the um, board of trustees and I'm the secretary for the board. Okay, Great. so I know it's confusing and Nancy explained it. Um, uh, do you, Trevor, do you have any? No, I, I think this, this is the right move, right? To now that we know, kind of separate, reduce numbers in there and there and to kind of get all the get all the legal work done. So essentially it's really a housekeeping issue yep. though that our lawyer can go through and make the next set of changes at Correct. the court and then have it all done. Sounds <laughs> I, good. I think that will eliminate a lot of questions. Yep. <laughs> and Do you um, have any questions? Yeah. Um, so has our council also looked at what you're proposing and said this is good? Um, it's my understanding that our attorney has worked um, with spoke with legal counsel when we had requested this for the special town meeting in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't believe that any of um, our memo was re was sent to her for re um, oversight. Not yet. No. Um, what I wanted to do was let you guys have this conversation. Um, I will certainly send her the memo, but I actually took the language that you sent in the memo mm -hmm. and in and put it into the warrant. So she'll have a chance to look at it when she starts to review the warrant. Yeah, okay. I was just thinking rather than waiting until, yeah. But if if we have enough time and the council can weigh in on this and we can change what's there, if it needs to be changed, right. um, that's great. Yeah. Or if we can do well, it before then. You know. I was just going to say, we should have we should have plenty of time for back and forth yeah. just to clarify, because this is, I mean, I know this has been going on for quite a while. Yeah, and, and it's complicated. It is because it's year, hundreds of years old. So uh, <laughs> things get murky after that many years. But no, I think it'll be good to 
And then, yeah, Lisa can look at this. It'll be in the warrant. She can adjust where it needs to yeah. adjust and we can work we can together it, to get it. We're, get we're it not embedded to any of the specifics yeah, of the language, exactly. but we, we did our best between it's a good job. Our, our legal counsel and every member of the yep. trustees adding their edits, <laughs> trying to make it yep. sound and it be as clear <laughs> as possible for everybody because it is confusing when you have the same entities and sort of the same naming. Yeah. And well, and same people. I mean, yeah, that's good. So I'm I'm okay with I'm it because with it I know too. this has been in the works for yep. a while. Um, I yeah. Think, as Tim said, we just have to have Lisa make sure it's legal so it's it will stand up. Yeah. To any scrutiny, and we'll alert our attorney that you know right. he may be yeah. in touch um, to. That's perfect. Go over further changes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is so there you're anything else? Planning right? seven members for the board of trustees, and do you have a number in mind for? I, I know the. I guess the paperwork for the original deed or, or the will or however it was spelled out was six. It was six to control the fund. I mean, originally it no, was, it was six for the total. Trustees. Right. And for the and fund, there so was like, we want okay. to expand seven for the trustees just so that we have a better number for quorum. Understood. And then um, our, our thoughts are for the Tilton fund that we would, probably put in there five to seven mm -hmm. um, because, you know, during the time of the capital campaign, we might want seven members, but at other times when there's not a lot going on, we might be able to back that down to five and with probably two people that would be a crossover um, so that, you know, we're carrying through the message of the work that's going on. Um, and so we would really have a very separate entity there. Right. Okay. Um because they had, uh, I think originally it was uh, two or three members from permanent members, right, were on the in the fund, and then there was a couple elected. Or yes, something there was like three that. permanent members, yeah. right? Great. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, and of course, this will never right. alleviate the question of, you know, ownership, because <laughs> some people don't understand that there are two types of ownership in Massachusetts: a trust right. ownership and a deed ownership, and. So we'll continue to deal with that. It's been very clear since the outset the deed ownership is to the town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else. Yep. Nothing else we know that. For years. <laughs> right. Some people just don't understand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or don't want to understand. Or don't want to understand. <laughs> that too. Great. Did we do what we need to do. Yeah, then, yeah. But we're just going to include it. Yeah, we'll yep, include it. It's then. already in there. We'll vote it's it. Already yeah, in there. later on when we do it. Yeah. Do the whole I, I warrant. Nope, we're good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you for all yeah. of you coming. Appreciate Congrats it. on your on your book, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Good work. Um, Rocky, do you have any public comments or Fran? Yeah, we haven't have done any public, public comments? comment yet. Okay. So we need we took care of that. No public comment. Mm -hmm. Um, I do as uh, actually I do appreciate your comment on the ADA accessibility. I I took notes on that, Rocky. Um, okay. So I think we're ready to go to the clean water asset management planning okay. grants. Great. Um, did, I I didn't have any questions, Trevor. Is yep. That Carolyn, can I ask a question? Oh sure. Did, did we already do select board reports announcements? Board oh, of Health? No. oh no. I'm yeah, sorry, not. Tim. You want so, to? Uh, I want talk you to go ahead if you have anything. And I'll... I don't. I'm I'm good. I'm all right. uh, I'm all set. I I'm just. Okay. Uh, Why Tim is getting organized on the 1888 building? I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't mean to skip over that. I just want to say the Not We Coalition uh, met. I attended the meeting. Uh, there's another meeting, March 27th. April 17th and May 15th, we've organized. Um, it's basically, um, there is some training involved uh, for the highway departments. Um, I have not talked to Kevin about it and I have not committed us to it, but um, it's more practical. I think it's very practical in the sense that if you're doing over the guardrail kind of mowing, you wanna make sure that the mower is clean before you move on to another space because if you have just little chunks of not weed it's still in there you're moving it down and spreading it's it's unbelievable so it will require some attention mm -hmm. and um some vigilance on the part of our highway department to keep it from spreading and um there are some 
opportunities for us to get some funding to take care of it because it's labor intensive to remove mm -hmm. as we're going to do um we are participating and we already have a grant for owen um worms to come and talk about um after um, field geology does a walk of bloody brook mm -hmm. we will be removing uh in training showing the highway department how to remove along our property um, on Bloody Rock, Brook, uh, the invasives, and then um, hopefully um, we can get them to chip away at it. Yeah. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, no. but the idea is to coordinate all the communities up and down the Connecticut River so that uh, we can work into the Deerfield watershed, the Mill River watershed, and be successful. Uh, Vermont has done this with some moderate success in um, Winsaki watershed and mm -hmm. a couple other watersheds. I might have mixed up my watersheds, but anyway, um, I, I I feel like somebody has to do something. So yeah, that's, that's it. And right. I am very appreciative of the school budget um, announcements, um, you know, Darius is obviously trying to work with us. So yeah, I appreciate that. And Tim, so go ahead. Um, so a couple of things related to projects I've been working with. Uh, 1821, we're at a position of needing to buy various things to outfit a kitchen. And um, so I'm going to send, I've been gathering information just, to, just for like appliances, sinks. Mm -hmm. um, I just got a report from New England Meeting House about um, dishwasher, uh, an island that includes two sinks and a dishwasher and faucets and um, ADA compliant. Um, so I want to, I will send that to everybody tomorrow. The information I have, we still need to get um, a quote on resurfacing the floor and leveling it, um, you know, because there's some different thicknesses of material. Um, so I wanted to see about working with the planner just to be the point of coordination on this. But if somebody has a different idea, I'm happy to entertain that. Um, and no, that's fine, Tim, with me. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I want Casey's opinion as well. He's it's a it's a finite project. Mm -hmm. Just thought with the town meeting coming up and you know needing your attention on you know warrant issues that pop up or whatever but i'm i'm totally agnostic about who that person is um 1888 i just want to um can i go back to the 1821 sure. building where are we on the relish and the steeple i know there's been some question uh 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 casey you, it's out there right the yeah. Yeah. Out there. so we received our decam waivers and john watney and i were working on this last week Right. Um, we had follow up phone call yesterday. The bid is out there. Um, the emergency repairs project manual is available if you'd like to review it. Um, John and I, there were a couple of elements of the bid that we're going to have to provide addenda for. So we're going to work on that. We're hoping to have bids come back by the 15th of March. And one of the reasons is there was a piece of information that we didn't anticipate um, not needing. So we have to make an adjustment in the time frame. Um, I'm waiting to hear back. There is going to be a walkthrough. I'm waiting to hear back what day that is because it has to be pushed. But frankly, we're working as quickly as we can under the circumstances to get a company hired to go in and do that work. Yeah. And I saw that that had gone forward. So that's great. Um, Thank you, Tim. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, I, that's right. um, I am truly worried if we get heavy snow or something. Like I've that. already talked to Kevin about that. He's yeah. got uh, a company lined up to handle it, and we'll take care of that. And Thank in you. so far as we can not control the weather. Yeah. No, I mean, so far, I mean, it looks like we're going into March right now with just uh, rain. So yeah. um, it looked, it was so, so nice that the foot, the foot snowstorm that we didn't get. You know, we didn't get. We got flurries. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we were um, very excited. <laughs> I, I just 
I don't want anything to happen. We're we're do, making so much progress, and Tim, thank you for spearheading this. Well, I just want to making so much progress on the 1821 building. I don't want anything to happen to it. Now that now that Eaglebrook is supposed to be out of there this week, I believe um, by the end of the week. So um, I didn't want to go ahead and do anything without sharing everything with everyone because you know there's purchases involved. Most of them are small small amounts of money, like. Um, the appliances are about $5,500. There's no taxes because it's a municipal the counter. Uh, I don't, I, I haven't looked at the, the latest bid for the countertops and uh, Island, uh, which I just got when I was coming to the meeting tonight. Um, the other stuff is ranging from like $1,500 to four or 5,000. So, but um, the floor, the floor project and the plumbing and the electrical will also be sort of small things. They'll have to hook up all the electrical. Uh, so the refrigerator, the stove, the hood, the exhaust hood, and uh, the dishwasher will be both have electrical. And then there'll be the plumbing for all of the sinks and dishwasher in the island. So we'll have to hire somebody to do those things and, uh, you know, not they're probably under two thousand dollars. Well, the plumbing might be a little more, but um, the electrical is really running two boxes from the circuit panel in the basement to the place on the wall where they're going to be located. So that's not a big bidding process. Well, but there's bidding requirements. Yeah. I'd like to see it. I haven't seen any of it. Yeah. So. Well, that's why um, I wanted to bring it up tonight and share yep. it with everyone. So um, we make sure we don't do anything that we're not supposed to do. So. Um, yeah. So that's it. Oh, so, so so the 1888 building? Yeah, the 1888 building is um, Kathy Sylvester's new CPC chair. So she's been working with Stuart Saganor, and I want to have some conversation with Stuart. There's still uncertainty about the grant that we've applied for. So I've reached out to um, both McGovern's office and started to reach out to Warren and Markey saying if the budget... If the government doesn't get funded, um, should we be preparing a new application um, for the next cycle of, of congressionally directed spending? Um, and I have only heard back from a governor. Kobe Gardner Levine said, you know, they haven't put out their paperwork for the FY25 um, round, but that we might want to, you know, just have a base base uh, a new application on a background from what we did in FY24. So um I can we just basically sub resubmit the same well the paperwork changes from year to year so it could be very it could be cut and paste. It shouldn't take a lot of heavy lift and um I did uh briefly talk to uh, Christopher Dunn about you know now that you're here is this something that you know would fall in your purview. We haven't gone beyond that discussion so um I, I personally think that we should put it in for 2025 because um, I I know uh, even I, the farm bill is yeah is up in the air right now. People and, are freaking out that the yeah yeah no, farm bill is going to run out. Uh, the extension yeah. is literally going to run out of money by the summer. And I I don't know if there's anything that um, that's why I think it would be helpful to have somebody like Christopher weigh in on the project, not just the CPC part of it, but. Is there any IRA, IRA money that we could leverage for infrastructure in the building? Is there, should we prepare um, this? We've just been through a devastation of roads and, you know, an adverse reaction to borrowing. And should we put in a request for more money, you know, first converse with Ward and Markey and McGovern and say, you know, it's clear that the town has uh, no desire to borrow additional money um, would be okay for us to, you know, request a larger percentage. So I just want to get some help with that. So I'm not out there on my own doing things. I'm, you know, Christopher is great. He he knows the the laws and stuff. So it's it's, it's very helpful to not make a mistake. So that's it. Um, the only question I had, um, excuse me is um uh on the select board announcements is we have a meeting uh or one of us should be going to the scheduled meeting at mass dot 
down at the Hampshire Conference Room at 10 a.m. But we also have um, MS, uh, MSA or MMA breakfast meeting up right. in these are Greenfield that day. What, what, what day is it? March 1st. So I, I didn't know what uh, we were going to do because um, Mass DOT, as you know, doesn't like to post anything, uh, have it posted. So that I'm assuming that only one of us is going to go to the March 1st. I, I was thinking, Trevor, if you were available to the March 1st Mass DOT, because this, this is really about the common. Yeah. What you have well, March 1st? Well, the, I was sent a uh, meeting notice for Mass DOT. Oh, great! Um, at the Hampshire Conference Room at 10 a.m. on March 1st. Okay. For, it said it was the intersection up by Mill Village. Yes, that was the start, and maybe we could tag on the discussion of the common. Common. And okay. So I didn't know how you felt about that. What's this thing about Mill Village? Which part of so Mill Village? The, the intersection there. Right. We had end. some complaints, right. you know, and we know all know it's a dangerous intersection. So Chris had been with right. that, had been reaching out to DOT to say, hey, can we start to talk about this? And I right. think it's just a, an initial get the conversation. Yeah. Get together to talk about what, what they're planning. And where is this Hampshire conference? Like it's at the District 2, I would assume. Oh, right. It's, it's, the Ham it's the Hampshire. Hampshire. In Northampton, okay. It's so the Hampshire it's Conference Room. Well. Yeah. well, they don't like us to post. Yeah. Well, no, I don't, I don't necessarily need to go. I was just curious. Uh, and Well, the conflict, the, the reason why yeah. I asked is because MMA has a Greenfield breakfast meeting at the same time. Great. Okay. So we could change, ask to change that date. If the mass dot date? The mass dot date. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, and some, you know, people have asked, you know, could you put a, a rotary in there, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I don't know, a rotary would be safer than what's there, and it sure it, would be. It would not, it would have a calming effect on traffic. Yeah, but um, there's room for it. There's yeah, definitely room for it. I mean, they'd have to take land on either side, but mm -hmm. they have a really huge. Right there, though. They own yeah. a lot of that section right. there across the road. Yeah. yeah. 50 feet on yeah, plus that other. Oh, okay. Thank so, you, Casey. Uh, they may not be willing. That's a pretty big, that's more expensive than putting in a light. But yeah, um, they but don't want to put in a light. They really are into rotaries. I mean, yeah. They, they yeah. work. So, so, so what do you want to do? Do you want to? I'm happy her? to, I'm happy to do either. If I, I'm happy to go to the, um, do, do you think we should ask them, ask you to reschedule because it's in conflict to the MMA? If they can. Otherwise, I'll go. Yeah, yeah I mean, if they can't, that's fine. Either one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the advantage of going is that you you start the process. Keep you moving, ask them right. things of date, and yeah. who knows when they're. I'd gonna rather do I'd rather just go. That's fine. okay. I'll go. So I, I'm fine. And what what will, time was that? It was 10 a.m. I will find the email and forward it to you. Okay. And you can forward it to me just for so yeah. I have it, but I don't I don't sure. I don't plan to go. And you I, said 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. and the uh, MMA. Is a breakfast meeting up in Greenfield? I don't have any other details. I don't even know where it is. Yeah, I wonder. I, yeah, I wonder where they're doing it. I don't. I don't know. see. Because that would would that be a place where we might see mayor disorder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said ten a.m. Yeah. Okay. Good. Got it. I'll send. I'll forward you the email. And sometimes those are early at like eight or something. Yeah. No, I think it is. It's Might like eight or eight thirty or something. Yeah. You mean the breakfast? The breakfast. The breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's more of like an update kind of thing. Also, just to remind people, we have a pollinator um, workshop mm. on March 3rd here at the town hall at 2 p.m. Well, oh, geez, let me, through, yeah, yeah 2 p.m. Yep. Um, we'll talk about dragonfly habitat. Yeah, those and are the really pollinator. attended well. Yeah, um, we're That's pretty fun. excited. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is different. We're trying to identify. We already have identified pollinator corridor along Bloody Brook that we're going to establish once mm -hmm. we cleaned out the invasives. So it'll be beautiful native plants as as an anti flood kind of thing, but also have a walkway along Bloody Brook um, with this strip of native planting. So hopefully we'll have. That's where our 
main corridor is, but the idea is to connect as many places in town with the surrounding towns, Greenfield, uh, to get an idea of where, where it is in Greenfield and Conway and yeah. a couple different places. Great. Okay. Um, next is Board of Health announcements. I just want to say we have Narcan training on um, March 26th at 6 p.m. Uh, the training was really, really valuable, and I'm just really hoping that everybody will put the calendar, mark on their calendar, March 26th for Narcan training and distribution. You can get free Narcan. Okay. Um, anything else going on here? We can go right into the budgets, I guess. Well, well we want to do the clean water stuff. Yeah, th this is the, uh, so these so are So that's two... actually in your capital. We've got yep. two capital requests. Um, yep. Well, we have others, but just to hit on, because we've talked about this a few meetings, I just want to recap what we're doing is that we applied for and secured um, grants for from MassDEP for the asset, uh, clean clean water, stormwater asset management, um, and that is to, to do a um, surveillance and create an asset management plan for all of our stormwater and culverts, um, you know, anything to do with stormwater. We have never done that, at least from my knowledge. We've done different culvert evaluations through Kirkhog and different things like that, but we don't really have an asset management plan. We did do, um, back in 2017, I think, a um, asset management plan for our sewer system. So we applied for a grant to update that, um, and we received that grant as well. Um, so DPC would do both of these. They have the equipment to run all the cameras, uh, document all the manholes, all the drains, all that stuff. So um, we have uh, two items. The first one I'll just go over is the sewer one. Uh, we have a grant. We got a grant for $150,000. There would be in... Uh, town in kind and budgeted resources that we already have budgeted that is eighty one thousand four hundred and twelve dollars. That's you know things that are you know det police details that kind of thing um, that we already have done. But the town cash match would be uh, uh, forty nine thousand uh, six hundred forty dollars, which would come from the. Um, so all this comes from the sewer. Yes, this is all sewer. Sewer yeah. capital. Exactly from the. And we had a meeting with Brenda, Dave Prickett, um, and uh, Kevin, and uh, to go over, you know, kind of do do we have the money in the budget? Can we do this? Yes, we can. So we're we've nailed down the funding on all that. And let me just make sure I understood what you just said. Yeah, forty nine thousand six hundred thirty forty dollars is coming from the the, the sewer project fund. Correct. Right. Okay. And the other 81 is stuff we've already budgeted in our budgets, but it's in-kind services. Right. You know, Casey's time, Chris's time. Kevin's time. Kevin's right. time. Yep. Yep. So that's that. And then similarly, the same uh, project, uh, but for our uh, stormwater, and that is also a $150,000 grant. The in-kind town services is $74,625. And the cash match on this one is $34,000. Two hundred and fifty dollars, um, and we were going to bring this to capital. Um, and it's been a couple of weeks since we figured where this one's going to come from. It uh, was either we had talked about bringing uh, using the money because we could do this right away. Was using the money that was um, from the old storm damaged account, or we do free cash. Uh, we can all decide where it comes from, but I think we talked about this. And I know you. I think was that the was day, the meeting I had to. Had I wasn't there. Hunt. I know. Yeah, I'm so sorry that happened. Um, but uh, we had settled this with Brenda and Kevin, and they felt comfortable where it was going to come from. Um, so I, mean, I felt comfortable I, moving uh, for for thirty four thousand. You're getting you know yeah, two hundred fifty eight thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah, and and uh, if we do it in this fiscal year, we basically need the blessing of capital right i would change it so knowing that because again i wasn't at the meeting yep. i would um just ask capital to consider it an fy24 as opposed to an fy25 yeah and that that was the plan was to we have we don't we don't have to do any of this until after june i think for sure we have 18 months to do the project so it could be 2025 
or we could use the funding from the thing if we wanted to get rolling earlier. So but, um, um, I just wanted to mm -hmm. make sure I'm looking at the right papers. There's, yeah, there's two. two. Yep. There's one, one storm water, one sewer. Yeah. Yep. So the one for, for sewer is 281. Right. And, and then this the, is 258. Yep. That's the, that's the wastewater, uh, the, um, excuse storm me, the water. storm water. And we're looking at, do we have in kind? Yes, we also have in kind services. We've already delineated yeah, what they are. Exactly. And yep. we're talking about needing a thirty-four thousand in cash. cash. Yep. And each of these have a um a breakout sheet if you yes. further yeah, no, I, in, yeah. yep. Of you know what the town's responsible for and 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 what they will do. I um so I'm a hundred percent supportive of that. Yep. And, the, and the reason why is that um, Berkshire Design just came through and said that they there is a choke, uh, you know, the culvert out here that goes over to the elementary school. Okay. A choke point and is oh. significantly adding to the flood potential. Right here. Right here. I believe that. So we had talked about using MVP funds mm -hmm. and uh, from 2.0. Yeah, and AARP for access, so it'd make it a really nice um, access to elementary school and to our yeah. campus. Um, so that is the kind of thing that we really need having someone professionally look at because the problem with the the fur clogs inventory is they basically look is it clogged or is it yeah like, falling apart? And nobody was looking at it from what's the impact of mm -hmm. this culvert. Right, and if we had had better, uh, better engineering eyes on it, I don't want to say right. You know, they could have solved some of the problems, but we would have known that we had some problems. Some, some of these roads there. Yeah. that washed out. True. Um, the um, the other part of this is what I'm hoping is that when we do all the camera work on Sugarloaf, that's what we've all been waiting for, for to say. What does this drainage and infrastructure look like under here before we entertain the thought of taking those roads from DOT? And I thought this kind of kills two birds with one stone. We can kind of see what's in there. It may not capture everything, but I think we'll have a good idea of what's in there for drainage. And um, well, and again, this is key. If we had had that rainstorm, what is the capacity of these manholes? Mm -hmm. We have no idea what, what condition. What is the manhole uh, capacity is because all. All these manholes are is you know just holding tanks, right? And so we need to put that into the calculation of how we're going to survive. Yeah, additional water when down. Something there. hits so, here like that. Um, when they're doing that, if they can give us a capacity, yeah, a storage capacity, then we can talk about upgrading it with mass DOT so mm -hmm. that it is more resilient and more um, able to take the additional water. Because mm -hmm. don't forget. In twenty to thirty years, which which I think is not even going to be accurate, we are having double the water that we normally handle, and yeah. so we we need to be thinking in our mind all the time, what is our capacity? What is our capacity to store water yep. when we have these events? So I'm not one hundred percent for it. All right. Do you have any more questions on it, Tim? Uh, no, I we'll I you were you were mentioning something about. Um, MVP and AARP is is that an alternative to finding money elsewhere or? Uh, well, the no for culvert replacement out here. Right. We we have the funding for some projects. Right. And um, my uh, I was told that they will do culvert replacement under two point oh, um, and additional money was Joe Comerford's. Uh, well, Elena told me that um, from Joe Comerford's office that the MVP 2.0 can be used towards culvert replacement. Right, and we're talking about just taking out a round culvert and putting in a bigger one or something. Right. That's it's, that's not collapsing. No. Well, it's... I The uh, report well, from Berkshire Design was that it was a choke point and it was not adequate for... Right. The, the, it's not the right size. Right. And, yeah. and the AARP grant was for um, ADA accessible... Kind of, you know, what do you put on top of the culvert? We could put 
you know, a, a really nice uh, bridge. That, you know, Sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack us, but no, but you know, that's the idea is to be able to get a um, choke. Sorry, choke point. <laughs> um, the idea is to be able to do a wheelchair accessible uh, mm. to from the campus to the elementary school, the elementary school to the campus, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So you have you have guardrails, you know, stuff like I mean, not guardrails, but you know, so people just don't go into the brook, whatever. Right. So um, we can wait and vote all these at once. Do you want to go through the other capital yeah. stuff while we're here? Sure. So I know you've got a, a server on here yes. for, for our office. And I made a revision to decrease that amount after I spoke to um, our contact at Entree. Thank um, you, Rocky. Rocky, it's always we were going lovely. With you. Thanks, Rocky. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's always lovely to have you come. Um. So, okay, so that, that you've got, it reflects, as you can see, the estimate was 25,000, which will hopefully be lower, which I think you lowered. Yep. Right, okay, good. Um, and then the other was, uh, you have the rehabilitation of the 1888 building on here. Yep, that was one I had received from Tim. Right, and uh, uh, this is to get it on the, on the, um, on the radar, right? Yep. And then, um, then you have the ongoing storm damage stuff, and this is yes. eight to ten million. What is this? Was uh, this is long term? Uh, just to show what things might cost down the road. Yeah, if you, it's no Little Meadow Road. Oh, you know what? That's another one that John didn't come on. Um, it's Little Meadow Road. Uh, it's down to single lane, but we are not um, going to fix that because it's all, really it just goes to sewer treatment so plant. This is all aspirational, right? We're not yeah. obviously voting eight yeah, million and dollars. No, this is it's to show that like Little Meadow Road, we would use the EWP program. Right, we right. need a two hundred thousand dollar match. Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollar match because it's more than a million dollar project. Okay. Um but we don't have any engineering if we m what we were spending here from a column farm road and deeper road is just to stabilize those roads but um to fix those is a million dollars each mm -hmm. we would use ewp and you need two hundred thousand dollars probably because both of those yep. are over a million dollars these are just to get stuff on people's plan right the radar plan. put there to say today. and what yeah. we will do is keep dumping you know i don't want to say We'll keep pushing them down the, you know, for the years out mm -hmm. because it's based on uh, how critical they are and um, the event. You need an event. And for... that's all we have, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. And I just those wanna... are all the select board administration ones. It's not okay. the other, it's not the entire compiled okay. project all right. group, but these are the ones that, um, since and I had no sent the sewer anyway. one out and I forgot to print it. I'm sorry. Yeah, this would be like thought I printed it. Seven, mm -hmm. But yeah. it's so people don't forget. Yeah. No, I get, it. To be I get it. So like we I just want to be clear that some of these repairs are, are you saying that all of these repairs are directly related to the July 2023? Yes. Or are yes. you saying that like River Road has had problems for a long time and now they were highlighted in the storm? Yes. So well, River Road. It, the it, reason why I'm asking is because are we saying it's road repairs from storm damage, or are we saying it's ongoing long term? I'm, road I'm saying because of we're asking continually asking for the state. I'm saying it's from July storms. Okay, that's fine. Um, the yeah. other thing we have not done, and Casey's probably going to pull out a shotgun at this point, is we haven't put anything on for the uh, old Deerfield sewer project either. We have not. It is on the, it is. It's on the capital plan. It's, well, there's right. a reference. It, ha, it doesn't yet, actually but... have an application. Trevor. Right. No different. I understand. No different I don't rules. know what yeah. to write down. No, I know. That's fine. I'm just, Casey, just highlighting it, things like yes, this. Because yeah. we got to tackle it, something it, at some it point. It's listed, Trevor, but there is, you know, it's something that keeps getting bumped yep. every year. Because okay. we, we don't have a answer for it yet. Do we want to vote these or wait until we meet with capital or just? Well, I would say these are what I was directed to put together 
Um, these are the ones that I knew about. If there's something mm -hmm. I don't know about, right. you need to let me know. Yep. I'm sure um, think if the board happen. agrees, <laughs> this is what I, cause I sent them to Mark Brennan and okay. told them they were coming. So that's fine. if there's something you want me to pull, that's easily fixed. But nope. those are the things that came up for our mm -hmm. sort of Since offices. There's no money for capital anyways, we do have to talk about all this stuff together. So, yeah. well, I, in my mind, the one thing fiscally that we, uh, need to just sharpen up a little bit is the capital process. And and by listing, the first thing that you yeah. do is you have to you have list, to list it. You have to list it. Mm -hmm. And and that's why um no that's true. Um and that's why I'm trying to get that. Okay. okay. It's not anything that we have to do. Is today. there anything the board wants me to remove? No. Or at nope. That's fine. It's good at the moment. I'm sure we'll think of something we we forgot yes, we right will. at the last minute. Yes. We well, will. no, but the sewer treatment plan is a bit of you know right now we just listed. I think. I know the know. the church repair is that something that's a capital thing. I mean, even though we have money set aside for it, yeah, we had we, that approved before. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I yeah, just want to make sure. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So things that just and in I probably should refresh it, but well, it's been ongoing. But the capital committee already approved it. And we've talked about it multiple times. Right. Maybe. Yes. And we already have the money. It's just. Right. It was the idea of moving it. Well, maybe the other thing we should discuss is on that list that Chief gave us. I'm not interested in taking 100000 from the from the church building to do any yeah. part of road work. That needs to be this spent on that building. I know there were ideas. That's it's fine. Idea. But it was 100000 we were going to pull from there. We're not. Um, if there's money left over from the the HVAC that was supposed to go back to ARPA, but um, that I'm open to entertain on that. And then I'm not sure what else was there. Yeah, I, I agree that basically what we need to do is finalize this number so mm -hmm. we can find out the gap between what we've been given from the state and what we need to pay for. Yeah. And then figure out where the money's going to come from. I mean, yeah. we talk about taking money from ARPA, but then we've got 260 from the previous storm event. Correct. And uh, I would rather spend storm money on storm money than yep. than take ARPA money and and tuck it into something. And do um, and the idea that you leave twenty thousand in in account. Well, if it's to keep the account open so that you have a place to put money in anticipation of the next storm, then let's figure out a number that keeps the account open but doesn't doesn't leave money in there that's meaningful for taxes and stuff. I had an idea I about that money, yeah. the leftover money. Yeah. And that's giving us a little bit of money to start engineering because we never have engineering. I was just going to say one of the things that I, the reason why John put here 200 instead of 260 or whatever it is, is because a lot of the um, applications, um, you need engineering money. Uh, up front. And Carolyn and I have talked about that asset. several weeks ago. And this, and this money, this storm damage money, is we can just, as a select board, say we need to hire Ty and Bond or Weston Sampson or whoever to get to help us with the application. Similar to the brick grant. Yeah, that that's a le legitimate reason to to keep. But money we, in. I'm not talking it, about very much. Right. But about... also, if we're going to use it for stormwater, if we're going to use it for a match for the stormwater. Uh, management grant, then we need to leave some more in there to cover that as well. I, I, I feel like we can have a discussion. We need to have yeah. a discussion of that. But I also agree. I'm not too excited about taking any of the church money because I right. want to move forward with the church. Get that the done. Church. Yeah. yeah. And I, I basically think that, you know, I would prefer to just scratch ARPA off here. Yeah. Stabilization. Yep. And and then we, we may have some resources that are going to drive up here in the next month or two mm -hmm. that we don't currently have which right. would so yeah i just want the work to stop and have us a number yes well um, because i, I, I think yeah. some of these things kind of like mill village road was it really storm damage not really yeah you know well, it's a problem that's existed for some time right because the farmers don't maintain the 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 swales right and it causes the pipes to block up mm -hmm. and you know so we're getting it done, but it's not really something that was damaged by the storms. Right. No, it was ongoing. It was right. True, and but, we need to it, stop doing that kind of stuff. Yes, no, it, it, it I agree with that. It. So, but yeah. Hawks Road, yeah. and once we get through I'm Hawks just, Road, then that I told John that was it, um, because everything else can sit. 
It's all God who said, yeah. Um, I know we're going to get to the warrant, but as we're talking about this stuff, uh, well, I'll wait till we get to the warrant. It's just getting late, so I'm yeah, I know. Roll through this meeting. So, here. for purposes of comments you might have about the capital requests, um, you tell me. Take a look at them. I had sent them out this afternoon yep. because I was having trouble compiling them. Nope. I had some issues technically. Um, and so these are the basic things that I was aware of that I received. Yep, that's um, fine. I think they're all and good. so I think there are what you have are all the ones that related to our offices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not sent out the wider um all the capital stuff because I just sent it to the chair of capital. Okay, that's fine. We'll see so at some point. You'll see it. And um, you'll go through some of these discussions because they'll come up in budgets, budget meetings. So I, I mean because I, we're supposed to be closing the warrant, I really wanted to get to that. Okay. If I could. I don't you don't have to close the warrant. Okay. You can leave it open. However, the reason we I scheduled things like this is so that we had adequate time right. to develop these articles. We have to add I, and maybe it's here and I don't see it the article to rescind the borrowing. It's, it is here. It's where, there. Where, where am I I'm missing it? I'm looking everywhere for it. Article 12 if I remember correctly. Yeah, it says to to see if the town will rescind the portion. Oh, thank of, you. Yeah, oh, right, it's there. Right, right. Of the bar authority approved through Article. And is there Bible. also an article to take from stabilization? No. For, for, we need an article to take from stabilization to pay for. So this extra want, five hundred and something thousand the flexibility to do that. Where yeah. else are you going to pull it from? Well, the well, question is: is five hundred thousand dollars in the next? six months so eight eight hundred thousand yeah it's it's basically if you go two four and one six it's roughly right. roughly eight so so it has to come from from general stabilization there is no other pot of money so what i would like you to do uh casey is um make an make in insert above um, article 12 because we don't want to rescind right. the borrowing authority if until you don't, the until stabilization you have... does not because uh, you have to, to take it out of stabilization you have to have two thirds vote right so if the article it should be article 12 the new article 12 would be yeah. the stabilization to take X number of dollars after we've gone through yeah. the different accounts um and decided what we wanted to take out of where mm -hmm. um how much we want to take out of stabilization okay. so i would do it i would frame it as stabilization or any other yeah things. right exactly and yep. then um i don't you know. want it above the rescission right yeah and right we also yep. need one from capital if yeah, we're going to pull from capital that. too so i think it needs to be two articles we pull so I much from capital because you, you can f think about how you Think about the motions you have when you're funding certain things. Right. You can you're fund from both. several sources. Okay, that's fine. As long um, as they're not. Could, that's stay. why I said we could say stabilization. I just want capital stabilization. Make sure or otherwise provide. I'm right. Make sure we don't have a you know Bruce St. Peter stand up and say you can't because you didn't label that specific fund and you need a two thirds on that. You what you do is you throw stable. everything at the wall. Well, that's and say, fine. But as free long cash as it's and legal, everything else. Check, well, okay, it would so, just. Yeah, so the sure. so the Article Twelve, if Article Ten Twelve, if we can find our funding sources, but it would be for taking it out of capital stabilization and the regular stabilization, okay, right, Casey, or I otherwise think, provide, or, or otherwise provide, because there might be another fund like like the um. Yes, but don't well, we don't have to two thirds. We, we need special yeah, funds. We don't you don't have to request the, borrowing the money we approval. have already, but we yeah. do need two thirds for capital and for general. Right, okay. because they do both require stabilization, two third vote, right. two thirds okay. vote. So, would it be? Um, would it, anybody entertain meeting just to go through this warrant on the twenty eighth? I'm, I'm fine and, with yeah. that. Uh, do that. I will be back on the twenty eighth. Yes, or the you know the twenty ninth. I, I mean, I'm just. I could do the 20. This is just an example back. of what I knew. Yeah, we were I know. Looking we're at. I figured that updates. everybody was going to yep. have things I forgot or, you know, they thought I should add. No, I, I've been I, doing I, my best to keep up with what I see for emails. Yeah. yeah. No, Casey. It's and it, yeah, it's great. I just wanted to say, you know, it, it deserves real attention. 
Yeah. Why don't we just do that? So you want to do a separate meeting just for this? Just the one okay. topic. Yeah. Um, are you able to meet the staff earlier? Yeah, I'll be back that I'll be back that twenty seventh. So the twenty eighth is fine. Uh, mm. Do you think we could do it at five o'clock? Sure. Would that be all right yeah. with everybody? Wait, what day? The twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Yeah, next Wednesday. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. Five o'clock. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna forget to write this down, Chris. <laughs> It's recorded. That's all right. I won't be at that meeting, by the way. Okay. No, that's, that's okay. Fine. I can, I'll do the meeting. I just, I mean, you, don't you let don't me even, forget. You don't even have to. I mean, we could, well, yeah, we're just, no, I think to. Tim makes a good point. To, um, we it it also have, means we could you just, could leave it open for another week and that yeah. gives well, you. Well, that and maybe capital, those two items together. I don't know. Or unless you just want this. One. No, no, I, I just didn't want anything else. Right. You know, right. But yeah, capital but... is fine. That's not going to be a heavy lift. Yeah. If no. we have all the things all requested. We well, can we've got it. as yeah. much as I know of right now, except for one article, and I was going to yeah. mention it, um, and that is adding an article to consider changing from a semi-annual to a quarterly billing. Right. I've had several conversations with financial staff. Yeah. And I know they were very nervous this year, it, which is tough. Well, this year was tough, but it's only going to get tougher because we're going to have more bonding, right. which means cash flow is going to be tighter. Yep. And I would You're remind right. everybody that if we did this in the April warrant, it doesn't take effect until July 1st of 2025. So it's a little over a year that we would have time to message about that. And I actually have the article language written. I received a draft from Lisa several months ago. Um, I didn't put it in because I wanted to bring it back up, but I also wanted to take the opportunity to tell you I'd had these conversations with financial staff and they're very concerned, but they also want to make it as easy as possible to make sure that we are able to manage all the money that is coming in and going out. Do we have so a lot? that would be my request is to add an article for that. Okay. Um, what do you guys think about that? Because I know initially no, we I'm fine with that. Y'all weren't terribly interested in it. No, I, I am. I mean, I, a I cash flow would help a lot, right? Yep. It would. It yeah. would. It is a difference, I will say. But it's not something I don't think we can message to people. Yeah. I, I don't see why. It's no. easier sometimes to pay a smaller bill, oh, you know, every no, three can, months than it is to pay a big one every, twice a year. But there's also the advantage, and, and Sarah brought this up to me, a lot of the people that would like to pay their taxes um, in one calendar year right. they have the opportunity to do that if we do mm -hmm. quarterly billing mm -hmm. to pay more ahead of the next yep. the changeover in the calendar year so um so i would be i would like to be able to add that article if the board yep. would consider it Go ahead. yeah yeah, yeah. worst thing that can happen is they vote it down right right <laughs> the worst thing that happens is they vote it down um, do we have much else to do i've got a um, do you want to go through the four budget forms? Oh. I will send you my report. Um, yeah, that's but fine. what I was going to say is if we go through oh, the budgets, those are the key budgets we need okay. to have ready for Monday All right, night. Let's do those so we can. Yeah. And then. Um, so let's do select board staff salaries. Um, I, I sent you an email and this is the paper copy of what I sent. And okay. it shows the changes um, to. um the assistant town administrator position as was requested by a member of the board. Yeah, and you also addressed some tr training reduction in the contracted services. Yes, yeah. I did, I did. Okay, so I'm fine with the select board sal uh, staff salaries if you wanna vote We're that. We're all gonna need to tackle this again in a minute, yeah. so. <laughs> and know. also, I mean, it, the you know finance committee might ask for some reductions. And exactly. so if the part-time <clears throat> part admin support is, there's, basically the the place we have to pick yeah so anyway I, yeah so do we I'm, need to... I'm fine with that because um you know chris is chris has been picking up with the you know notes and stuff. he has but of... he also we have to remember chris's capacity is starting to get stretched too he's got some major projects in front he of does. us yep, we he had does. to reallocate you know re-address yeah of the lease project that originally Waitley was going to handle. So right. I assigned it to Chris mm -hmm. and Chris is a rock star and is handling it very well. Thank you very you know much. Chris is a rock star. Um, <laughs> but 
what we would need to do if we eliminate that part-time position is reallocate amongst staff. I know. And we already Our have, I just want to remind people that we're moderating meetings. Well, let's, let's have that battle with, you know, when we talk let's, about let's, it. I would just say, let's not, not battle, have that battle unless we have to. Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean, but let's just, we're going to have to explain. So. Right. We're going to explain. It's the first year after we start added a new position. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, just be thankful where it's not the scams budget. <laughs> yes, I am very thankful because I went through that last week with Josh. <laughs> okay, contracted services. So Do what you you'll see there anything? is really, I did confirm yeah. two things. I confirmed with uh, Brenda, the cost for weights and measures did go up. Okay. And we also, so I sent it in my email when I sent this out earlier, I basically told everybody, we have the opportunity to participate in essentially a group manner with the FERCOVs, one of the FERCOVs subscriptions for HR support. And Sarah and I both sat through a couple of information sessions to really get a feel for what this could mean. And it could mean that we get lower cost training and the ability to have more resources than we currently have. Okay. And so after I talked to Brenda and talked to Sarah about it, I decided initially we had put $12,000 in for training. I reduced it to eight. And I think it's reasonable. We'll do the best we can. Something crazy comes up. We'll have to talk about it, but okay. Um, those were the two changes. Expense. There's also a couple of changes that Carolyn and I discussed after the joint meeting last week to board of health and board of health yep. expense. They look good. I'll make a motion to approve the oh. said presented budgets. Um, I will second that. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn Nelson. Awesome. Knowing that we're going to revisit all these. Yes, yes exactly. we'll revisit them multiple times. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. All right. And I can send you my report, Chris. Yeah. Worry about it. Chris already sent his out, so yep. he's Thank better you. than me. I'm... Uh, I've just got to run a little early, so yeah. Uh, no, it's all right. Is there anything else we missed, Chris, that we need to get to desperately? Uh, was, let me check. Uh, I think good. we did everything. The FERCOG, so what that was is it's actually the an updated version for the Senior Center Feasibility Study. Oh, okay. And I can sign that, so yes, I already please. signed it. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep, all right. thank you. Um, so we'll just, whatever needs to be said, we'll do it next week. Okay. Yeah, it looks like that covered everything on the agenda. I Great. think so. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Casey. Sorry, I yeah. missed that one. No, no worries. Okay. Um, I will take motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? MLGI. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much.